What? Oh, what's, what did we do in that, Joe? Yeah, they're going to add them. When is that happening? Oh, out of two? I don't yep. see it. Really? I call this meeting to order. If you would please stand. And Jennifer, would you please lead us in a Pledge of Allegiance again? Did I have you do it once before? You have not. Oh, Jennifer Hale, please. Would you, lead, <laughs> would you please lead us in a Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <coughs> Welcome, everybody, to the, <coughs> the Municipal Budget Committee meeting on Tuesday, December 7th. I'm Stephen LeBranch, the chairman. Ginny, would you please introduce yourself? Ginny Bridal, school board representative. <coughs> Danielle Augustine. Lauren Buckley, Hampton Beach Village District Rep. Regina Barnes, board of selectmen representative. Steve Henderson. Jones. David Moore. And we have Barbara Kravitz with us, our minutes recorder. So, <coughs> Mr. First, chairman. Yes, sir. If I make, I make a motion to move the SAU 90 budget for $22,877,640 and call for an immediate vote. I'll second. second it. Oh, I'm sorry, Steve, oh, that's go ahead. Oh. Moved by Tim, seconded by Steve Henderson. What was the amount, Tim? An immediate vote for $22,877,640. Is that cor the correct number? <laughs> okay. Um, any discussion on this motion from any members? No. Seeing none. Uh, those in favor, raise your, your hand, please. Tim, are you in favor of your own motion? No. Okay. So we have Steve Henderson, Stephen LeBranch, Regina Barnes, Maureen Buckley. Um, oh my God. Danielle. Danielle. Danielle Augustine. <laughs> Sorry. Little. You're in the wrong seat, Danielle. I know. You know <laughs> Sonny and also Jenny. In favor and those opposed? David, what are you voting on? SAU 90's budget, $22,877,640. And those abstaining? That's correct. Those I abstain. abstain. And Tim abstained. I'm against it. Okay. But the rest, it, this is a democracy, so. Well, thank you very much for coming in. Um, uh, we still, oh, we still have budgets <laughs> more articles. Mr. Chairman, I move uh, Article 2. Oh, they're in here? No, they're in here. For $300,000. Sorry. 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 Steve Henderson. Mr. Moderate, uh, Mr. Chairman, I move uh, Article 2 for $300,000 and ask that it be considered read as written. It is for the purposes of the $300,000, which is going every year for school building maintenance stuff. I'll second. Seconded. Motion by Tim, seconded by Steve Henderson. Uh, discussion? No. From anybody seeing none? Okay, those in favor? Uh, we have Ginny, Sonny, Danielle, I'm going to write your name down, Maureen, Regina, <coughs> Steve LeBranch, Steve Henderson, those opposed, David, abstaining, Tim Jones. Mr. Chairman, I move Article 3 for $100,000 for the purposes of a second school resource officer to serve Center School and Marsden School. I need a second, Steve. Second. Thanks, Seconded Jenny. by Ginny. Uh, <laughs> I'm getting hard here. We're going Mr. so Chairman, fast. If I might ask uh, if we could have a, a discussion or a description of the essence of this uh, particular article. You may ask that. So we have a, it was moved by um, hey. Tim, Second. seconded by Jenny. Discussion, please. Explanation. So we have a relationship that is defined by a memorandum of understanding with the Hampton Police Department. Currently, there is a SRO who spends most of his time at uh, Hampton Academy. He coordinates his work with the principal's office there, the social worker for the district, as well as the guidance department <coughs> and the central office. Uh, and the Hampton Police Department bills SAU 90, the Hampton School District, on a quarterly basis or biannual uh, basis for, uh, uh, for um, those services. Uh, the board uh, uh, has been concerned with security. Uh, we have recently uh, made application to the state to secure, uh, hopefully, $665,000 of state dollars from the public school infrastructure fund uh, to leverage in making safety and security upgrades in the three buildings, Marston Center and Hampton Academy. Um, 
in tandem with that, the board uh, has had discussion about security over the last couple of years, and they would like to add a second school resource officer who will split his or her time between Center School and Marston School so that we have a presence in those elementary schools as well as the middle school. Uh, the conversation that they had uh, at their last school board meeting with the Hampton Police Department, the chief and the deputy chief, uh, suggested that the costs uh, which have been itemized uh, by the department, the costs to secure an additional officer uh, are just under $100,000. they are estimated at $99,895.74 uh, by their calculations today. Uh, that officer would be a Hampton Police Department employee contracted to the school district as is the first uh, to work with us uh, at those two schools and they would bill us accordingly and the supervision and employment would be within the, con the definition of that MOU that already exists. Thank you very much. I want to mention that in Sunday's Seacoast Sunday, there was an article about the anniversary of Sandy Hook and Max Sullivan wrote it, did a good job, and interviewed several school systems within this area and um, security is number one for those children. Okay. Any other? I might add to that that this is a priority of the school board. It has been for mm -hmm. several years. We have received several grants from Homeland Security re regarding surveillance and other tools for us to use in the, in the district, as well as having a complete uh, review of all three schools in depth, giving us uh, 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 strategies for around security. And um, so this having that school resource officer in those two locations uh, only add to the security for all of our kids. Thank you very much. Anybody else have any? Go ahead, David. What do you do about the high school? Do you have one that yeah. that one? That's a different SAU, David. We don't have any. We don't have any. We don't have any. Uh, they have one. They do have one. They have a, a second SRO who's. I, I I believe that the relationship between the Hampton Police Department and the Winnicott School District is by MOU as well, and I believe they bill them for those services similarly. Thank you, David. Anybody else? Seeing none. Yes, I do. Um, Tim? <clears throat> How many years ago was it that we did our first SA? Oh, SRO, School Resource Officer. Many. Uh, 96, 97? At least. It's been a yeah. while. 96 or 97 since we, when we first instigated it. Mm, has it been that long ago? Yeah. Yeah. Well, we went from dear officer, then we went into SRO, so kind of switched over. Dear officer? Yeah, we had dear officer. What the hell is dear officer? Dare. 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 Oh, dare. 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 And then <laughs> from dare, we went into, uh, you know, having the... Uh, I, 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 think, I think our board made it very clear at our last meeting and over a number of discussions over this topic that given the climate and the culture across the nation, um, you never know. They never. You, there's no prediction to this. There's no um, certain signals that are going to prevent this from ever happening. But the board has felt very strongly that preparation is the most important thing that they can do, and they will always, always um, uh, lean to the side of safety for the kids. So we've had uh, one school officer, one school resource officer, in play for a dozen years. Twenty-one. If you go back to 96. 21 years, okay. And now we're moving to a second one. We only have three school buildings. So I can see the next step is we're going to have one for every building. Is that what we should anticipate? No. Why? Because we anticipate because of the age group and the duties that would be for that, that two police officers can cover the three schools. Two SROs can cover the three so schools. So the younger, ki the younger kids, because they're younger, are by definition safer? No, they're not safer, but there's probably less issues in a non, not security time. So for the, <coughs> the police, the, the off SRO officer does a lot of things besides safety measures at the academy. Am I correct? Yeah, so one of the roles that our uh, SROs have is actually working with the kids. They actually talk about all kinds of safety issues in the fall. They're talking about bike safety, um, stranger awareness. They, um, they develop relationships. One of the key points, both Chief Hob, uh, Deputy Chief Hobbs and Chief Sawyer indicated to the board was, it was so critical that you develop those relationships. Those youngsters now have really strong relationships with, with our SRO right now, Matt Robinson, 
And because of that, it really does change a lot of the behaviors as the kids get older because they do have that relationship. And I think one of the pieces to this is developing that. I think what Ginny's point is is that it's uh, less. there are less issues for them to interact in terms of um, stranger awareness is one that you do a lot of work with little kids. <coughs> but bike safety, they don't take their bikes to school yet, but they do at Marston, so they do a whole program on that. Walker safety, again, we don't have um, uh, little ones walking home by themselves. Uh, either their parents come there on a bus or they get a ride home. So there are different roles in each of the buildings uh, that the, the officer takes on. At middle school, they're talking about drugs, they're talking about alcohol, that, that those kinds of issues uh, that are more prevalent perhaps as they get a little bit older. So the list of things that I'm hearing have got nothing to do with the, the uh, article that Max Sullivan put out, which was speaking about Sandy Hook and some whack job coming in with a gun and, and, and uh, shooting people. Well, I, I, didn't, I didn't hear that on your right, list right, of right, concerns. I think it's part of that. I didn't hear I that on your list of concerns. Well, it is part of the concern, but that that is all. That is probably the main concern for having an SRO. So then, why wouldn't you anticipate having it one in every school? Because at this time, with meeting with the chief and the deputy chief and the superintendent, they felt that two officers could take care of the three schools equally mm -hmm. and be fine. The uh, new school remodeling it has additional enhanced security features. I understand. Is that yes. correct? Correct. Significant. Yeah. When uh, Nate mentioned the grant that we just applied for with uh, um, infrastructure money that just uh, was newly um, designated for uh, public schools, uh, we have ne almost $250,000 worth of increased safety, including windows, doors, um, entrances, uh, alarm systems, security cameras, <coughs> uh, the, the list goes on. So that will be part of our new project. But we also felt that that was a, a good place that's a good place for all of our schools to be at in Center and Marston. So in addition to the $250,000 of enhanced security measures that are being spent for next year, implementation of next year, we're going to spend $100,000 every year going forward plus inflation, right? Mm -hmm. In addition to what we're already paying for the first school resource officer. I got that right? If the voters choose, yes. Right. And so... Um, you know, everyone likes to be reasonably secure. I certainly do. Uh, but there's a point of uh, excess to security. Um, I, mean, I wonder where that line is. With 1,256 so, children. Um, I wonder where that line is. I don't think anyone can answer that any better than I can, where that line is. I mean, I could argue that you should have one in every classroom if you really want safety. But, I mean, let's not get absurd, right? So where is that line of a happy medium? I don't know where it is. I don't think anyone does. But I think maybe we might be moving a little bit fast. I'm done with my questions, but I have a statement I'd like to make. Make it. Um, I'm marginally not inclined to support this because of all the other money we're spending right now, and I think we're going just too fast on this. But moreover, I want to point out that it matters not how I vote tonight. <coughs> In fact, it matters not how I vote on any of SAU 90's Warren Articles because SAU 90's governing body is, uh, represses the voice of minority. So when anyone votes in the minority, your vote won't be on the tally on the ballot because you don't do tally ballot, uh, votes, do you? Which is a repression of the minority voice. And I object to that. The state, so I've done so. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome. Maureen, you had a... Yeah, I'd just like you to speak if you want to... <coughs> The, the drills that you obviously must have involved in in security, homeland security. Mm -hmm. I know that you do that. I remember doing it myself. How often does that uh, take place? Well, we do, um, for instance, we, we do bus drills, so you know that, the safety on buses and yeah. how to evacuate the buses. That's both in the fall and in the spring are done. On top of that, we run 10 fire drills throughout the year where we have an, uh, an orderly evacuation of the building with teachers and children. But we also do, we continue that. We have lockdowns. Um, we also have lockdowns with evacuation. We also have, you know, it, 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 there's a lot of different things that we're doing and with them places now. places that they can go to. There's that if safe places that yeah. they can go to. We've yeah. already been practicing that. If you've been in town, you've seen them out because they were practicing that. Um, we feel that if it becomes routine for the children and for the teachers, Right. We, we empower our teachers to make <coughs> decisions because 
we're not always there with them or their principals. I mean, we have awesome principals. They're behind me, and, and, and Dave and Lois and Tim and their assistants, Nathan and Anna, do a fabulous job. But they can't always be in that classroom or in that cafeteria. They're often in the cafeteria, but you know what I mean. They're not always in every place. So um, we've had to make sure that all of our staff is well-trained on knowing what to do without having Excellent. specific directions. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Sonny, you had a question? Yeah, I had a question. I raised it with Jenny a while ago. When I go and pay my water bill, I noticed SAU 90. I, was just, I asked Jenny why you didn't set your superintendent's office up in Center School. I mean, it's half empty. Well, said center school is not half empty. Um, I, well, I, there, are, there, in there, there are there are uh, <coughs> there are very few spaces. We did look at that, Sonny, because we were trying to um, see what spaces would be available. We have seven people that we serve in that office, and our special education department, along with our finance department, um, as well as the administrative assistant and Nathan and I. So. Um, uh, plus, we needed a place for meeting spaces. I meet frequently with the leadership team. Uh, the school board often uh, uses that as a, a, a secondary place for their meetings. And so it, it did not meet our needs. And as a result, there were only um, very small spaces available at center school, not even a full classroom. So um, I'm not sure where the thinking no, is that it's half full. It isn't. Yeah, so. Yeah. So we, because you signed a two-year lease. And, you know, that seemed good money going for no real reason. That's what's mine. I understand. But the, the other thing I noticed, your enrollment's still going down. Yeah. Well, the enrollment's kind of a funny, uh, a, yeah, a funny know. beast for us it right now. When you look at the Hampton Academy, up, right. you would look at Hampton Academy since I've been here. That enrollment hasn't changed more than. Uh, a delta of about seven kids, seven to ten children. Um, where we saw the greatest reduction in enrollment was in the young ages, in the center school. And many of that, much of that, we felt was young families not being able to afford the housing and not moving in. Things have changed uh, uh, in the recent enrollment reports. You'll notice that the enrollment <coughs> in the center school has picked up, and so we're seeing more and more of our students coming back. And I talked to other area schools, um, Northampton, uh, folks in the area. They experienced the same thing we did at kindergarten, um, but now they're seeing um, an increase back in the enrollment. Uh, the state of New Hampshire just saw an increase in uh, births, uh, 1.7, not a huge number, but it was an increase, not a decrease uh, that we've seen over the last few years during the economic downturn. So I feel like we're, um, we're steady, uh, we're growing, but slowly. You know, I'm not trying to start a war. No, I know yeah. that, but I think your questions are, are, are good questions, Sonny, yeah. and I think that yeah, they deserve yeah. good answers, and that's what we're experiencing right now. Yeah. The other thing I noticed when I went through, you know, you buried me under numbers here, was that the, the teachers' contributions towards the retirement fund, much less than the police and the fire. You know, the, the retirement fund has got serious financial issues. You know, we don't just you know we don't set the rates. Those are set by this by state I law, yeah. and, and so I, uh, I, I, I appreciate I that there is a difference because the programs are different, um, and uh, and I want to go back and just tell you, we did actually write on the lease. We wrote a 14 month lease so that we could be out at the end of the first summer with an option to extend. So we're not uh, we're not looking to stay outside of our schools oh, yeah. any longer than we have to. Thankfully. Uh, you know, there's, um, there's no real problem. Okay, all set, Sonny. It's up to the voters. So. Right, all set, Sonny. Okay, David. Um, I'd like to ask a little bit more about the school resource officer from my perspective. <coughs> I'm glad there's one in the high school belongs there. I'm glad there's going to be one in the junior high belongs there. I'm also 100% that the one belongs at Center School. Those kids, that you can be trained all you want, which they are. It sounds like it's in-depth compared to when I was in school. We didn't have anything except get under the desk. There and maybe an occasion. <laughs> I had nothing to do to be back in the building. They just didn't want to see me. Anyway, but seriously, and Hindi Sook, what, 
Handy, whatever. Sandy Hook. Yeah. Sandy Hook. Excuse me. That's okay. Um, Take your time. That person walked into that building with a gun. And if our officer is not there at that school, if there was one, a similar incident, and they're over Marston, two minutes is too late. One minute is too late, depending upon where they walk in with an AK-47, which you see in the news, or things of that nature. So I heard what Tim had to say, and I agree with the fact that we, it's expensive. But the bottom line is you're worried about kids. The kids at that school, I think we're all elementary, and I think there were third, fourth, fifth graders along with four adults, teachers, and including the principal. So I'm disappointed that this person will be split between two schools when in reality, in today's world, which is very <coughs> sad, I think we need an officer in each school full time, my opinion. And that <coughs> That's the way I look at it. So I, I can't vote for this the way it is, because I'd want to see it. Maybe you have to amend it or something, but I'd like to have one in each school. <coughs> or maybe you can say, well, we'll do that next year. But maybe next year might be a year too late. I don't know. I hope it never, never happens. Obviously, nobody does. And, I, <coughs> I, I, and the person over there working with the junior high, this one person be doing a great job, plus what you did on the school buses and all that. Um, that's the essence of what I, um, So it's a question. What is your thinking, and what do you plan on doing about center school? Well, obviously, you heard that we share, um, but we also know that we have some. That's um, your long-time vision some. is to share? That's the question? No, I, I don't think so. I think the board wanted to take it in small steps. I, don't, I think they recognized the importance of safety at all three of their buildings. They absolutely did. But th when we built this budget, um, when we worked on it, Nathan and I, and then the board spent hours and hours going through it, um, they were very sensitive to the things that were happening around them, too. They were sensitive to the issues that the town has relative to their water and sewer and all the things happening here, so they felt like they needed to take a, a little bit slower approach with it. I think that um, n next year, given the, the, the work that we've seen this year, I, I, I expect this issue to come back up. As I said to you, it is their priority, and I don't see that as changing, David. I, I think they will continue to do that, but I, but I think that um, perhaps we were all a little bit <coughs> concerned about the costs that we would be asking for in one year. In this situation, I would make an exception to the cost with the, with the lives of the children. Well, I appreciate that. Period. Thank you. And I'm sure they do too, David. Thank you, David. Uh, Tim, did you want to say something else? Yeah, I do appreciate those who are making my very point, which is inevitably we're going to be going to one per school, and who knows, maybe one to each classroom eventually. Who knows? But I would point out, since more references are made to Sandy Hook, that uh, Sandy Hook has, has done its reaction, and what they've done is they've encouraged and achieved a certain number of teachers. They will not specify the number and know who the teachers are that have received firearm trainings and have firearms in their classroom to defend against the nutcake that comes in trying to shoot kids, which may be a more effective strategy than having a uniform sitting there who is easily identified by some nutcake who chooses to come in and start shooting people. So that's all I have to say. That's not a question. Thank I'm you very much, I'm Mr. making Tim. that state. Can okay. I answer that? Uh, hold on, hold on. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Ginny? Yes, the school board did, in fact, discuss that very instance. We discussed it with, at the superintendent level. We also discussed it with the um, police chief and the deputy chief. We feel that the teacher's first priority and only priority in an emergency situation is the children. And if they have to decide between the children and a gun, we don't want to put any teacher in that position. So we decided against arming our teachers at this point. That it was a school board discussion that was taken long and hard, and we did look at that option. Thank you, Jenny. And I, I know that there are other things that you do for security that we're not going to discuss publicly, okay? So that being said... Yes, I would point out, Mr. Chairman, it is sad that any nutcase that might be watching is now aware that none of our teachers are armed. Uh, okay, any other comments? <coughs> any other comments? Seeing none, those in favor of this article, please raise your hand. We have Ginny, Sonny, 
Danielle, Maureen, Regina, Steve LaBranch, those opposed? We have David and those abstaining. We have Steve Henderson and Tim Jones. Did you get all of that? Uh, I have that. Um, who, made, who was the second on that? Jenny. Jenny, Brown. Jenny that's what I have. And um, <coughs> is there, I'm sorry, but is there an amount? Yes. $100,000. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, yes, if I may move, Article 4. $44,574 for the uh, Sacred Heart School. And uh, I assume this, there's no one from Sacred Heart here, is there? No. I'll second it. Thank you. Um, I would assume then that this is the same formula we've used in prior years for this one. Absolutely. Okay. So there's really not a lot to talk about, other than people who might want to object to give money to Sacred Heart School. Okay. Um, hold on, hold on. Okay, so... Barbara, moved by Tim, seconded by Steve Henderson. Okay. 44,574. Did you get the number, Barbara? Yes. Okay. Um, any, yeah. Sonny, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I'll go through this. Yeah. How many Hampton kids in from Sacred Heart? 43. Oh, so <coughs> I think it was 40 last year. Yeah, right? we gave, they gave three. Oh. I mean, they dropped out of... No, they could have entered in their preschool, <laughs> yeah, okay. so they've never right. been to him. Okay. You know, my objection is, you know, this is taxpayer money in three. The Constitution says there has to be separation between church and state. And I just feel it's improper use of taxpayer money, that's all. Well, it's, it is an RSA, and it is uh, regulated through the New Hampshire statutes uh, to allow uh, towns to... They call it the child benefit <coughs> law, and they're allowed to uh, appropriate funds uh, to support a, a parochial school or a private school that may not have the services uh, that a pu the public school has. And in this case, uh, the folks from Sacred Heart use this money to support their school nurse program, uh, technology, and some items that they aren't able to have that the public school has. And that's how they use their forty-three thousand. Uh, they don't. Ha they can't just use it on their own. All of their purchases and all of their the things that they want to use that money for must go through our office, and those purchase orders go through myself and Nathan uh, before they're paid out, so that there is accountability for that forty-three thousand dollars. In this case, forty-four thousand. I have a question. You done? Uh, you finished, honey? Well, you know. I, I I'll raise the same objection I did last <coughs> year. If it was a Muslim school, I suspect it wouldn't pass. Or another religious school. That's all. You know, I, I understand what's going on. Listen, in the federal government, they're going to let tr churches raise money for political purposes. You know. Thank you, Sonny. Yeah. Thank all you, right. Sonny. Uh, go ahead, David. Uh, and could you tell me approximately? would it cost for one student in Hampton, be it elementary, medium, or high school? What's the average cost per student for the one student? The um, average cost per pupil for Hampton is about 15000 15 and a half, yeah. About $15,400. Multiply 15000 by 43 and see if you come up with 44574 That's the best deal going. I do that any day of the week, blindfolded, walking backwards, upside down. Thank you, David. Hold on just a minute. Just so that you realize, would you please explain that the money that is paid to that school can only be spent on certain things? She did right. that. She just said that. She it, explained it can only that be spent very clearly. On um, uh, items that they don't have at Sacred Heart <coughs> that um, that we would have naturally in the public schools. One of them is nursing services. Right. That's nursing. an example. Uh, technology is another example. Um, and so they, when they make their requests, they do it in those <coughs> items that they they don't have and that we we offer. Okay, thank you very much, and I'm thank, thank, thank you. you, David, and um, Tim. Tim. Yeah, there you go again. <laughs> <laughs> Tim, go ahead, please. I mean, again, it's my first go around on this item. Oh, okay. Go ahead, please. So I assume school resource school resource office is another item like nurses that they don't have. Right? That's correct. So you'll be sharing that school resource officer with them? We haven't discussed that right oh, now. Okay. But they got an increase in enrollment of three, in spite of the fact that they're 
lacking school resource officers. That's very noteworthy response from the market. And the 15000 or so that you quoted per student, that's actually how the feds count the per student cost, right? Oh, but the if state. You, the state's the state. Okay. That's a state number. But if you actually take your budget and divide it by the number of pupils, it actually comes up to close to twenty thousand dollars, doesn't it? Yeah, sure. Twenty one thousand. There you go. So that's the real number. In my mind. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You certainly better buy. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any other questions? Seeing none, those in favor, please raise your hand. And we have uh, everybody yes except uh, those nay abstaining. That would be me. Tim Jones abstained, everybody else. Um, Sunny said. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't notice Sunny. Yeah. And Sunny abstained as well. Two abstains. Two abstains. For your information. <coughs> yes, ma'am. If any citizen or any member of the Hampton community feels strongly enough that they, we should go for the two hundred thousand dollars for two <coughs> school resource officers, they are welcome to attend the Hampton School Deliberative Session on Tuesday, February sixth, seven p.m. at the Hampton Academy and present an amendment to Article 3. Thank you, Jenny. And, okay. as, and as well, they can come to the, um, the public hearing on January 11th, correct? But you can't, you can't add anything on the public hearing. Can you, can you amend I believe we hearing? can change. Yes, I believe we can yeah. change. Right. Is that, am That's I correct, correct or not, Tim? You're shaking your head. Seems like in the past we've changed. I just sent to the, the uh, RSA on that. It says you cannot add to an appropriation. Oh, well, thank you for that clarification. Okay. So go to the on deliberative session. On the school deliberative session, there you can. There you go. Thank you very At much. At the deliberative session, you can, regardless of whether it's school or otherwise. And for those who want to have a school resource officer in every classroom, they can do the very same process, can't they? Yes. Yes. Contact Mr. Jones, and he can have those facts. I look forward to supporting you. that. Thank you very much for coming in. Anybody have anything else for... <laughs> The superintendent and the financial director. I believe we have a vote on instruction. Vote. Any uh, we did take a problem pop up so far. In the, in the construction, is that what the question was? Uh, we had, uh, as you know, uh, early on in the project, uh, <coughs> back in the the uh, seventy four edition as well as in the sixty five edition. Uh, they used a substance uh, mastic, which is a black mm -hmm. substance, and it did uh, contain uh, some asbestos. Seven percent of the the substance was uh, had asbestos. Uh, the 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 sort of the bottom line is only three, so that had to be disposed in a certain way, uh, and it was taken care of, taken off site, and uh, and taken to a site that accepted uh, that material. I mean, the, uh, well, some of it went to Vermont, others yeah. of it went to Maine, um, not New Hampshire. Uh, the second issue that came up is unbeknownst um, to all of us, uh, even after doing some uh, digging in the in the area early on and doing the um, uh, borings, the borings, uh, the borings the and uh, yeah. at the geotech, uh, apparently um, back in the early 1900s. Uh, and before the 1900s, that site was a burn site. It was a dump. And so they burned uh, materials. Uh, the, we found uh, old bottles. We found parts of cars. Um, we just found uh, the pedal to a sewing machine. Do you remember the old iron pedals on the sewing machines? Well, we found one of those. The kids found a license plate from 1913. Not the kids, but the teachers, and then shared it with the kids. Um, and uh, from Massachusetts, so it was a burn site, and um, because there was, and also um, there was some speculation that some people dumped ash from coal, you know, from their coal bins, um, so that that material was uh, what we called unsuitable, uh, not a real danger, but it had to be removed separately and brought to an, a site off off of the site of Hampton. So those are the only two issues that we've dealt with that have uh, slowed us up a little bit. But the buildings, the, the uh, schedule, we are on, we're on schedule. Uh, as you can see, we've got the uh, auditorium is, um, not the auditorium, I'm sorry, the gymnasium is all got the steel up and uh, we're ready to move to the next section of the building where the classrooms are and um, further going up the hill towards High Street. And you'll see all the steel being erected over the next few weeks. So we're in good shape. <coughs> all set, Sonny? asking, Sonny. All set, Sonny? Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Um, anybody else have anything, Bob, before they leave? 
Thank you for coming in. I hope you enjoyed our new efficient process this year. I, and I bid you a Merry Christmas. Thank you. Same to everybody. Thank you. And we appreciate thank you both everything for coming you did in. For us. I didn't you. get to spend much time. I didn't even get to say hello to Kathleen. Hello, Kathleen. And both <laughs> of you have a Merry Christmas. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, next on the agenda, um, if Jen, Jennifer, and Chris, if you would please come up. Because of what's coming up now. You have to, that's part of your default budget. Because it's a, it's a very Okay. There are the union contracts. Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay. Good evening, Jen. Good evening. Good evening. So, um, I've asked Jen and Chris to come up um, first because... Because um, you love them best. No, because I talked, to, <laughs> I talked to Jamie earlier today, and I said I'd get him in and out of here quick, but Frank Swift is having a retirement party tonight, and at the 401, and Jen and Chris want to go and, you know, attend the party. And, and we're can, invited, is that it? Yes. Yes. Get out of here early After enough. After 20 years. We're working on it. We're working on it. We're working on it. Congratulations from everybody. But um, so if you would please, you have a couple of warrant articles for us. Do you have a number on that warrant article for the vehicles? I assume you want to do first, right? Yes. Yes. I move the number of 500 and... No, Tim. No, no, no. no, 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 no. You just watch the select I did. I just... There's a warrant article for vehicles for 500,000, isn't there? Hold on, hold on. There you go. Huh? Yep. Switched it up on. Do you want me to read the article as yeah. we? Well, you know, I was so busy cutting up the videos for you guys, I can only speed watch it. So I. <laughs> you want to uh, send one down to Barbara as well, please? Okay. Uh, the one that you're talking about, you can do number page two, Tim. Well, I'll just go right to page one, I guess. Okay. Right. Since that's the biggie anyway. You're still doing the 13. Which one are we starting with? 13. Uh, one, one, improvements one. to the wastewater treatment plant. I move for $13,880,000 and consider it read as written. Thank you. Is there a second on that? Mr. Henderson. Steve Henderson seconded. Moved by Tim. The number is one three eight eight zero 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 zero. Now, if I could request uh, Chris and or Jen to tell me the essence of this one article. You may request that, if you would, please. Um, I'll start, and then I'll let Chris fill in. Go right ahead. Uh, because he knows this mm -hmm. plant uh, inside and out. But this Warren article stems from the Wright Pierce uh, facility study that was completed uh, this past year that made recommendations in three separate phases. All these phases uh, were based on level of need, uh, safety, uh, and process uh, constraints or capabilities that we currently have at the plant. Uh, so after a long and quite intensive study of all our uh, processes, our equipment, our pumps, the fact that uh, I'm sure you've seen the presentations we've done uh, before uh, of some of the older equipment that we have, that these phase one improvements have been uh, listed, and that's what's listed in the long part of the Warren article for the 13880000 that identify all the different components that would be uh, improved and upgraded as part of this Warren article. Uh, we also, uh, as uh, yesterday, presented an action plan how we'd like to move forward uh, with public uh, education uh, about this article about how a wastewater treatment plant, uh, plant process works, uh, why these improvements are needed. These are not wants. Uh, these go to address the capabilities from aeration and headworks to the raw pumps and intakes to ventilation, the air that uh, we're breathing <coughs> in the plant, to the way uh, our plant is set up uh, from a safety standpoint, making sure that we have the right um, fire systems, alarm systems, backup systems. Uh, without the wastewater treatment plant, uh, waste does not get processed. Um, it's fairly simple in that nature, uh, and having the older equipment and these systems that provide a non-safe environment 
are something that just plainly need to be addressed. That's the uh, beautiful Short overview mm -hmm. uh, in layman's the technical side. And, and let me adjust, address a question that was raised last night by, I believe, someone who gives technical advice to some members of the board. And that, and one of the questions was raised last night, what has changed in the last several years that puts all of a sudden the plant at its limit? Because the plant used to be about a 4.7 MGD million gallons a day plant. It's, it's rated about a 4 million today. Um, that, that never has really changed. The, the, um, they, they'll tell you in our plant size is 4.7 million, but you're only allowed to, on a daily basis, treat about 80% of your capacity. They don't, basically don't want you overfilling the bathtub in layman's terms. What changed in 2014 was the state recognized that everybody in the state was putting in breweries. Summersworth had a, has one now. Uh, Concord has a couple. Uh, Portsmouth has several. And we have one. And what those breweries do is they send not a lot of volume water to the to the plant, but they send a lot of strength <coughs> water. Uh, it's uh, high strength, what we call high strength waste. It's very biologically active uh, in, in layman's terms. So the state amended their rules back in uh, 2014, and it basically says uh, that yes, your plant capacity is 80% of its design load, what its design capacity is, and also um, that you can't exceed 80% of what's known as its BOD load, and that short, short for biological oxygen demand. How much air you can push into your waste to clean it, because basically our plant operates on aeration. We have four big treatment lagoons or bathtubs. Um, we pump $160,000 worth of uh, uh, use of electricity to pump air through that, and it's the air and the bugs that reduce the, the effluent, or, or <clears throat> and it equals its BOD. So when you throw in high strength waste, like let's say from a slaughterhouse or from a, uh, a, a brewery <coughs> or uh, an industrial facility that, let's say, makes bread and, and discharges a lot of waste with milk and eggs in it. Um, it takes more oxygen. It uses up more of the plant's capacity. So in 2014, the state basically said they added another line to the to the limit, and it said um, if you can, you cannot exceed 80 percent of your BOD load for three, more than 90 consecutive days. We're bouncing against that limit. We do it for about. 60 days. Uh, we have uh, in uh, 16. Uh, we have in 15. And we've been working with those several industrial users that we have to manage or reduce our BOD load to keep us just under that limit. So the short of it is that for the town to continue to grow, we need to expand the size of the aeration lagoons and other things, pumps, uh, piping systems, uh, filtration systems, all those associated things that go along with the, the major aeration portion of the plant. And that's why if you look at the, there's 12 separate things or items contained within the uh, scope of work of what we want to get done, 6 million of the 13 million is just the aeration lagoons themselves. That's in, in, I'll open it up for questions. Thank you. Thank, wait, so, hold on. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay. Did somebody have some I questions? believe I had the floor. Uh, you got to be recognized by the chair. I first. believe I had it when I asked for the oh, essence okay. and then was going to follow okay. up with the questions. You have the floor now, Tim. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome. So the essence of this is to improve the wastewater treatment plant. This is, as I understand it, phase one of three. Is that correct? Correct. And each one is approximately the same price tag. Correct. Um, and the other two will be a similar warrant article in subsequent years. Is that what the expectation is? Yes. So we're going to be getting a $13.8 million uh, bond request this year. 
Next year? No. Okay. Help me <coughs> out. Subsequent years, but and I said yes, but do you want me to spec? I, no one knows the number of years. It could be, it's going to be difficult to spend $13 okay, let me, million let me in one year. Let me try to from a different angle. Okay. How long is it going to take you to finish this work? I don't know. You have presentations and detail uh, scheduled for a number of bodies, correct? Right. Uh, and, and those will be concluded by, those presentations will be concluded by what date? So we did a presentation for the Board of Selectmen November 13th. That one you can find on Channel 22. Yeah. We will be presenting in front of the Planning Board tomorrow. It will that be the same presentation it or will it will be, be an improved presentation? It will be the same presentation with a little bit more, more including detail. our action plan of how we plan to move forward. Right. Okay. And then from there, so starting after tomorrow and after the holidays, we'll work on a rollout uh, for some videos of the plant, some sign-ups for people to come down and do tours, as well as a question and answer period before deliberative session uh, that we'll set up that will be open to any residents that want to come and ask specific questions so they don't have to feel at a meeting or a board meeting okay. um, to do it. And we'll answer those questions as well. So it will be a rollout of continuous information and hopefully understanding for people to fully understand what this facility's so, improvements are. So tomorrow night you're going to the planning board Correct. with a more detailed presentation. Than Slightly last more night. detailed, but it is the basic presentation so of the 12 components. It's going to include implementation details, isn't it? Yep. Right. Which is what I was just asking. Well, to, and the uh, study is online, so for anybody yeah, who wants to study, read it. Yeah. More specifically answer your question, how do you... It, it will not really be feasible or reasonable for us to spend all $13.8 in one year. Um, looking at the screen, things like um, about halfway down the screen, primary sludge pump upgrade, you can actually replace or design that pump standalone from other project. Same thing with the thickened, thickened sludge pump transfer replacement, the polymer system upgrade. Those are more while not inexpensive, more easily wrap your hands around. The first one, which said uh, headworks upgrades and aeration tank upgrade, probably will take the rest of 18 to even design and get approved by DES. Well, I approached it from the angle how long we do this work because I was trying to get from my previous question, which you couldn't answer, I was just trying to get a little more background. Right. But so my real concern is, uh, what I and, and the voters and the taxpayers should anticipate going forward. The context of this is actually one of three phases. Right. And and really, we kind of have a black hole with regard to phase two and phase three in terms of timing, right? Right. And and it's because it's based upon timing, growth of the, the, the water that we see actually coming at the plant, how, how quickly the town is growing, a number of factors that my crystal ball. Yeah, the growth thing, I want to ask you a question right. on that. But let me finish on the, sure. the, the first part. So the voters need to understand that while we'll borrow the 13.8 or get authority to borrow it, hopefully in March, um, portions of it will be let in 18 and portions of it will be let in 19. And we might still be constructing in the year 20. Sure. And at about maybe 20 or 21, we may then be formulating, okay, this is the next step. But let me caution you in that the phase two and phase three, while they can be quantified now, may actually change mm -hmm. four years out, five years out. And the actual phase three, I think I'll be retired before we actually go to that um, particular phase because it'll take that long to design, permit, and implement. Well, um, I'm not particularly concerned when you retire. I'm no, concerned with the taxpayers now and in the future. Right. Um, and, and so I understand that this is born out of a basically a problem statement that was derived from the famous well, peer study, right? No. It, it is, and I, please don't well, classify it as a problem statement. Pursuant to the rules that we operate under with the EPA and DES, Every five to seven years, based upon growth in a town, you're supposed to look at your facility, and that's why they call it a 201 facility study. You're supposed to look top to bottom, left to right, everything from electrical to uh, air quality issues to 
fire sprinkler systems to I understand even if you have yeah. so every seven years you look at that now these things that are some some of the major things that are in phase one were also in the previous report that was laid out six or seven years 2006 and even one or two of them are in the report from 1988 so these are the same what they did in 88 and has warned us that we'd need aeration lagoons someday 2006 said you're going to need aeration lagoons pretty soon 2017 you need them now mm -hmm. so this has not been a um, unpredicted occurrence it has I wasn't suggesting it was. Okay. But this, this, this Warren article is in, designed to be a solution to some to problem the, to statement. This portion right? of the problem okay. is correct. And, 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 and the problem comes from the PS report, right? It was identified. It's defined. The, right. the parameters of the problem is defined in the PS report. Correct. And this is a solution to part of that problem definition. Correct. Right? Okay. Now, you spoke about uh, capacity. Yes. Um, <clears throat> And I, I remember watching you in a previous board selectman meeting, I believe, and you spoke about the growth of at the beach having making made significant contributions to the increase in capacity. Sure. And that was related to the high rises, correct? Uh, to the density, yes, to the overall density of what we're building. Right. Yes. <coughs> and uh, what I would note, Mr. Chairman, is that time and again when those high rises were getting approved, getting special exemptions from the zoning laws. We were told time and again that it would have no impact on any infrastructure. None. And yet, here we sit. Mm -hmm. Also, another problem with the capacity is the, the content of the pollutants that are being uh, right. input into your system, correct? It's two issues. Quantity, overall quantity, number of gallons. Like, for instance, if you looked at the report, our op we track our operating parameters every single day, every single hour. Uh -huh. We summarize those in a report that we then have to turn in monthly. Right now, this time of year, we're averaging 2 million gallons a day. It's almost like clockwork. It'll be 1.97, 2.032, 2.1. It keeps, it holds steady. July 4th weekend, it's 4 million gallons. So it's during the summer, it's due to the influx of other people in the community. Primarily the beach. Our visitors, our, our day visitors, our week visitors, our long-term visitors. Our summer residents. Our summer residents, mm -hmm. yeah. And it's also due to um, the, uh, the all the industrial users that we have. We have four or five. They send us more waste. More and, pollutants, and some, particularly. Right? And, and some of it stronger waste. Right. right. And that, that, that is very costly, isn't it? Both of them are. Right, but they're having an intensive, like right. the brewery is one example of that, isn't it? Exactly. And, and is there not an ability now to measure and tax them for the excessive pollutants that they're discharging? There is, but let me, okay. let me give you. you a parallel to that. The police department has the ability to speed, to find people speeding. <coughs> does that make people, does that make everybody slow down? Does me. Does you? But when I come Doesn't down, you you ignore when, the police. I don't know. When I come police. down ninety five no, no. every morning, <laughs> I can tell you the number of people it doesn't it doesn't really matter to. So yes, I could in, I could ask the selectmen as the sewer commissioners to put a surcharge on high strength loads. Thank you. That's BOD. all I wanted to know. Okay, but is it going to stop the BOD from coming? No, and the recommended thing has been forty two dollars per hundred pounds of BOD. And please it won't don't stop it from coming, but it will enable you to have funds to address it that you don't have now, correct? Not in relation to the changes, not in proportion to the changes that need to occur. But it will have you it will give you more funds. Give me a few and fines. Yeah. It will give you more funds and that's the point the only point I wanted to make. I didn't want to say that it would make up for the whole Warren article. Not suggesting that for one second. Okay. Well, Just sort of a disclaimer. Well, I'm not suggesting that. I appreciate okay. it, but you you have to understand that when these things get raised if they're not fully right, and I, or explained. I just acknowledge that, and I, I, I'm not you. suggesting it's a full solution of any kind, okay? okay. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I would say that uh, uh, we have a more detailed presentation coming to the Planning Board subsequently. This is a big thing, okay? Uh, I, I would, uh, I would, 
like to see this table to a subsequent meeting of the budget committee before we decide to recommend or not recommend. I think because I we will be we will be better informed at that later date than we are presently. I want to. And that's the reason I want to do that. And I want to point out also that last year, last year, we had a thirteen million dollar uh, Warren article for sewer pipes across the marsh. Hurry up! We got to do it. The world's going to come to an end if we don't do it. Right. Kind of, sort of like this. Hurry up! We got to do it. The world's going to come to an end if we don't do it. And we just conformed, and we said, "Okay, fine. It's an emergency. Let's just go do it." And then we came to find out later that it wasn't so much of an emergency. It wasn't even so much of a present problem. In fact, last night the board of selectmen voted to not put that same warrant article on. Okay. I would like to speak on this. on that on, on this year's warrant. All right, And I could say more on that, but I don't want to because I want to stay on this particular point. <coughs> we have the time to address this at a subsequent meeting when we have a better opportunity to be better informed. And that's what I'm asking the chair to do is to table this. I'm not opposed to it, but I'd like to have more information before I actually make a recommendation. Okay, are you finished? Thank you, Mr. Chair. You're welcome. I'm not going to table this. I didn't think so. Okay. We have, after this, after tonight, we're, we're getting towards the end, you know, very close to the end. And if there's something that comes up, Tim, that is um, that changes your mind or adds so much information, if you know people watch tomorrow night <coughs> and other meetings as well, then when we do our um, on January 9th when we have our final budget review, then at that point changes can be made. Okay, I agree that more information is best, uh, but but we're not going to table this tonight. Okay. Sonny, you've had your hand up for a while. Yeah. Please okay. go ahead. He had I, I learned that, that what now I know what is he goes like the water. All right? It's got beer in it. Yeah. <laughs> we watched the uh, water boyfriend last night because it's dancing with the stars wasn't on, so we looked for other entertainment. Chief Soy made a presentation. Is he had visuals. Persuasive. Did you see him? Yes. I have watched yeah. him. Yes. I mean, you know, I thought that was tremendous. You know, I don't know how many people in town actually watch, but I mean, that's, you know, my recommendation is you have to present the... We're going to, we are doing as part of some of the additional information that will yeah. be explained yeah. tomorrow night, yeah. is that, and we explained to the selectman Monday night, is that we're going to do approximately 10 to 15 videos dealing with these various aspects, try and keep them less than, I think it was 5 to 10... About five, five, but no longer than piece, ten, yeah. mm -hmm. so that people can watch these and and come to grips with that a what it actually looks like inside the plant, and b why these processes or these projects are necessary. I mean, to give you for instance, the th all the wastewater in the town dumps into what we call the headworks, large swimming pool. It's pumped out of there by three pumps that have been running continuously, the same three pumps, since 1974. One of them threw a bearing last week. Um, so now we're down to two. <coughs> During the summer, I need all three. We have some very aged infrastructure within the plant, and that's what hopefully <coughs> these video clips will clarify or show the people. We're not dreaming this up. It, it was reported in the 88 facility study, the 2006. This is not a pipe dream. This is reality. We have met the end of our capacity. Um, and the other half of that rule is if we, if for this coming summer, we break 80% of our BOD for 90 days in a row, DES then has the authority to start issuing all of our discharge permits. I will no longer have the authority. Um, I don't think we want to go that way. I think we'd like to maintain local control. And, and I'd like to be able to sit and keep issuing letters to the projects that come before the planning board to say that we do have the capacity or well have the capacity when this comes online. That's no, it. No, I, I totally agree. You know, uh, these warrant articles are going to be bond issues. There, there's about $41 million was spread out over the three. But I understand, years. we're only borrowing 13 now, and, and yeah, no, I'm well aware. spread that over 30 years. Yeah. I, don't I know. mean, the big thing is DES is looking over your shoulder because you had the leak last year, 
and they, they had the, the, you know, they, they shut the beach down because you're over the 80 percent. You know. well, let's be clear, as yet we continue to, to discharge water that does meet their requirements, very low, uh, uh, very clean water, very low fecal count, very clean water. So we are continuing, but we are using more and more chemicals every year, norm, mainly chlorine, yeah, uh, to achieve that. Because yeah. one of the issues I had was when, they, when the town rushed to authorize a hotel on Exeter Road, and it was a restriction on the deed, no hotel, they waived it, and they rammed it through. Then they found out that Liberty Lane has the water and their wastewater side by side and now aquarium is going to do that and i suspect liberty lane will get an abatement so the end result was the taxpayers sonny we've been over this before i realize okay. but i mean if we're not aware the we, public's not aware of it it's not that's not we've, true okay hold on hold on hold what on it's not true. hold on hold on order okay we've been over that before let's stick with <laughs> what we're talking about here. Right? Well, you're Liberty talking Lane. about capacity of the wastewater treatment plant, and you'll be over 80% when you have 150 cars parked on Exeter Road. They're going to park in front. Uh, never mind where they're going to be parking. Um, <laughs> right. just well, it was runoff, you know? Yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> Can I okay. say one thing? Hold on, hold on. Sonny, we have talked about this before. That's right. Okay, so... And unless Please. you keep talking about it, the public doesn't become aware you, of it. You certainly keep bringing up Liberty Land. I know we've talked about it several times. Um, Regina, you wanted to say something? I just wanted to say this $13.8 million Warren article, is, although it's presented in this report as three phases, it does, definitely does not mean three years. I'll tell you that right now. Hmm. And like Chris and Jen said, whenever it might be time to start phase two, phase two is going to be completely different than it is right now. This is this is thirteen point eight million dollars that has been pushed aside right. and for I'm, far too long. I'm not done for far ahead. too long, and the marsh pipe is a priority. But guess what? It's not the top priority right now because now we have this one, which is bigger. So when you ignore infrastructure for thirty, forty, fifty years, this is what happens. It all gets into a ball and rolls up and explodes on you all at one time. So the board of selectmen didn't feel comfortable asking the voters for $18 million or what it would have been in for the two of them put together. So the way we look at it, and it's a pretty logical way, or the way I look at it, I'm not going to speak for the board, is that if we're going to go out there and fix the pipes that are connected to something that's drastically failing, doesn't make sense. You want to work in and go out. So this $13.8 million is the start of a lot of work the town, that the town has to get done. Thank you. Steve, Steve. Hold, hold on, hold on. Everybody's got something to say. I do too. The having read this book, um, right now the this first part is the stuff that is priority major has to be done now. The second part, by the time you get to it, that'll probably be priority major has to be done now. The stuff that's in the third part <coughs> that doesn't seem to be a problem right now, by the time we get to it, that'll probably be the priority major stuff that has to be done right now. And another thing I want to mention is that having read this entire book from cover to cover, um, the, the industrial amount. Uh, the, there are a couple of things going on that I want to add because it's not just going to be uh, a hotel on Liberty Lane. The, the uh, infiltration from the clay pipes, we talked about that the last time you were here, okay? Lots and lots of water. Millions of gallons of salt water going in, changing so that you end up, it, it ends up messing up the polymer uh, that yep. you add that, that chemistry is changing. The other thing is that in this book it talks about up to 40% of what's going into that uh, surge treatment plant is from industries like brazonics, uh, the uh, FOSS, FOSS, as well as Smutty Nose. And it seems to me, having read this thing, that <coughs> brazonics was the biggest that sends to you. It's 20%. The, it was 40% in here. It was like 10% from FOSS, 10% from 
uh, the smutty nose and 20% from Brazonics. I was <coughs> quite surprised. I didn't even, I don't even know where Brazonics is. I didn't realize that, you know, that that much industry, but that's good. Industry is good. But I just wanted to point that out. So having said all that, David, go ahead, please. Thank you. I have a number of questions. Sure. Number one, I'm completely behind what you need to do. Thank you. It needs to be done, and that's kind of a tragedy that we can't do it all at once so we don't have all this money. But if you're saying if it blows up, we're going to be really in a bad situation. Question number one, <clears throat> when this work is now being done, how many – have we put this out to bids? We've already been no, through the process? We haven't. We have not – been to design or bid yet. So you don't, that's that's a step to come. Correct. So part of this money that's going to be going, we know that we're going to, I'm making this up, we're going to go up to three different companies. There yes. may only be three companies out there that do this work. I don't know. But pretend there's three companies. Yeah. Then you're going to try to give the same thing to them, and then you'll be evaluating them and look at the costs and all that. So that's yes. a 2B thing, right? Yes. Thank you. Second thing, what I, a little bit from data processing background, what I hear tonight is making me very uncomfortable in the sense of, I know it needs to be done, but when you talk about phase two, which needs to be done, and phase three needs to be done, you really need to put in place, which it sounds like you don't have one, but we don't have one, and I don't, I, I don't know this, so it's more of a question, please. A strategic plan from the beginning of what we want to do from stage one, which is this, to stage two, which now by the time you get to stage three, it's so strategic. It's five plus years out, you can't predict it. Right. But there should be something there with concepts you want to do, but you're going to reevaluate that when you get closer to the date. But that also needs to be on a big project plan. And it needs to be updated monthly. Along with that, on phase one, which you have here for $13 million, if I'm going to be the company you sent to, we need to have a project plan on listing each one of those things on that list and all the other things where they need to be on this project plan that has every one of these things to be built, by whom, with what day, because as you get into closer, I need B, C, and X to help L and O, and by that time they get in, you know, something over here. So you need a plan, and it sounds like there isn't one, that's going to show how all these infrastructures are going to eventually work together harmoniously versus getting to this point here and saying, you know, we should have done this back then, but we didn't put it in the plan, and all of a sudden we have to stop. I'm making that up. Yeah, okay. So I'm not seeing... <clears throat> a large plan. I'm saying we have $14 million and I know the thing has to be done. Right. I'm not arguing. I, I, I think it's a huge undertaking and it's a huge thing on your shoulders, both of you with your entire department. <coughs> right. But I think when you show it to us or show it to a person like me, I need to know where that $13 million is going to go. <coughs> and an order of the needs and what the things are. And what does each piece cost? You got a gravity thicker? Good to know. You got a plant water system? Good to know. I don't know anything about that. You do. But section, you examples. section four has the actual breakdown by in millions. Right. Um, but we need to put as those far as, coordinated. For instance, some of the projects like let's say I'll pick the Palmer system upgrade because it's literally no bigger than the size of your desk. Right. Can be done standalone from the aeration lagoons because those are two big bathtubs attached. So yes, as part of the for, we are going for uh, state revolving loan fund money or at least that's the latter half of this Warren article gives the selectmen the authority to go for it, which is the uh, it's the, the sewer grant money underwritten by the state, controlled by the state. They will mandate for that, show us your flow chart. And part of the design work will be from whomever does the final designs, will be to actually determine that flow chart. Without that, we won't get approval from DES yeah. to do any of these projects. Because so they're not going to let us replace something that then we rip out that they, no, they won't let, that will not happen. That is part of this plan. So I think it's very important for everybody to understand. And again, we're here asking for the Warren article for this phase one, but phase one consists of the design, the putting this all together, looking at what is individual, what goes together, 
What's to make sure we don't need something in phase two that we're not going to do twice? That, that is all part of this and stuff that our engineers have already taken into account. We should have account. a project plan now showing when we get, get, theoretically get, need the design by the warrant is approved this date, designed by this, this contract here, put the bids out. There should be something like that. Okay. You That's probably have that. That's process. a good one. We can, we can. That is good. Yeah. Now, That's along a with that, what, what you brought up, and I've heard this from other people, is reference to the smutty nose. I was probably hearing misinformation, but when I was talking to somebody last week and at, at the meeting, we talked about smutty nose, the amount of flow, no, not only the thickness of their grade, super thick fraps, or whatever you want to call them, but it comes down versus water that's rather thin and clean with all the, I'll, I'll call it sludge for that lack of a better term. It's mm -hmm. not sludge, but I'll call it sludge. Mm -hmm. And I heard <clears throat> prior to this, and I talked to somebody else in town, that was within the town hall. And the person that they've not only doubled the output that normally we flow, flow which whatever that might be, it was the fact they've done triple that. So that, no, no I'm only telling you what I heard. No, this information. That, in and fact, I have an email on my computer. They're permitted right now to their industrial discharge permit of 15,000 gallons per day. Per day. They've been averaging 11. Yeah. So they have not doubled flow. But they do have some peak days where they may bounce to 17, but then the next day is a 9 or an 8. So when you look at it, no, they have not tripled. There was also talk that I heard about that potentially they'll be the best way to charge the, some of these costs because the industries that I heard were here was 40% FOSS and the other company, whatever, industry, which you wanted to tell. Absolutely right. correct. But if they have a triple or whatever for the average citizen, and you, and you can do it with a water meter, how much water you use, I guess, with aquarium. But there was talk about, it may not be, but it should be fair usage for volume. And if you go with a certain amount of excess, people should be, and you also talk about the thickness of, it's harder to process this chemical coming out of such as smutty nose due to the aeration that I heard because of the, the type of material it is and all that. Right Shouldn't now, it be a surcharge of some nature? And there can be it. That is something that's in the capital, uh, the CI facility study, capital reserve fund, getting my acronyms swirled together. Um, you're right, there is something in that report that does talk about a BOD load can be charged, or they're recommending a charge of $42 per 100 pounds of BOD. We can determine that by literally grab, grabbing samples out of the pump station that l eventually leads to the plant and we can, we can back charge them. Um, that is something that the Board of Selectmen, as the sewer commissioners, would have to uh, pass and then direct me to enforce. So that's a potential that, that is might a potential. be able to happen yes. through the Board of Selectmen, whatever appropriate. I'm Correct. not saying we'd do it in the, in the financial board. But to reiterate, that alone would not fix these priority needs. Understood, need but done. I also, I in the future, sure we gonna, if we just, we've got a 28 or $30 million school mm -hmm. going up here. Right. You've got a $41 million sewage project here. Mm -hmm. And what we don't, matter of fact, the police chief, the last time he was here, surprised me when he was talking about the leaking of the new system that is the new facility for the police station is like 10, 11 years old and it's leaking everywhere. Well, you're building on a swamp. I said that from the beginning, you know, X number of years ago, but the bottom line is we build things and then about six months later, oh, they didn't do this right, they didn't do that right. Now all of a sudden we obviously have to fix these things, which is fine. But at the same time, that's what I'm thinking and just in reference to like the companies that utilize a lot, they ought to be taking their fair share versus putting on the Point. average John Q system. That's not the only point I'm trying to all. make at all. Correct. So it, it's a huge undertaking, <coughs> and I, I'm with you 100% to yep. go forward. Were my questions fair? Yep. 100%. To the Thank point you. and succinct. Thank you. Thank you. All set, David. Okay, I just want to mention, and um, I believe Smutty Nose does some type of pretreatment. Is that correct? They do. Okay. And that's how they've that's, been able to stay so that's something below David, the 15,000 gallons. A piece of information that you may not have known, and this is the guy that's going to give you the, instead of, you know, stuff that you've heard, they actually pre-treat. That's why that I was, brought it to him. Right, and that was one of the conditions when they, de when they right. designed their, that plant was to take into consideration what the load's going to be on, on the town of Hampton. To help so, them meet their permit requirements, they're right. currently pre holding back portions of their waste what they call an equalization tank 
they're offloading it and bringing it to another wastewater treatment plant that needs the BOD. Okay. So that's, that's how they're, yeah, that's they're meeting their current permit standards. That's interesting. Yeah, it is Feasible. interesting because they're, yep. uh, another facility needs this to activate their own, you know, get this uh, oxidation and, and right. chemical reaction start going. The other thing I wanted to mention is that, um, is that this right Pierce um, study, it actually does have, it's a three-part plan. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, you know, you kind of indicated, David, that this beginning and then, you know, well, we, do we really know what the rest of the plan is? Yeah, the whole plan's in here. I understand it, but I'm listening to the words that were said earlier tonight. Okay. We and talked about, I don't know what the second phase is, and then the third phase, who know whatever, okay, and I might well, be retired. Next question, what are you planning on retiring? Ten years. Okay. So, It'll be done before you retire. It'll be done before you retire, I hope. We'll, we'll <laughs> see, maybe. But, but the point I wanted to make is that they do have an overall plan. Okay, it's it, it's going to change, of course, as time goes by. There's going to be things that are there may be There may be operational changes that's, you know, that, that's that affect the future. this plan. That's the yeah. future. Okay, so any um, anybody else have any comments? Uh, Mr. Jones. Yeah, I would say you have an idea. You don't have plans. If you had plans, they'd be design plans. Design, that's what plans are to me. What you have is an idea. All right, and so how, how are you going to approach phase one? Part of phase one is producing design plans, right? So there's a distinction in my mind. I do not oppose this. In fact, I would point out to Regina that last year I supported the Marsh sewer pipes, as you may recall. But there were those who were not in favor of them um, and who were expressing concerns about the health of the sewer treatment plant. And they were told uh, by certain selectmen, for example, and management, that those arguments were basically vacuous at best. And now we're hearing quite the opposite, which I find very interesting. Furthermore, I would also point out that two years ago, before you arrived on, on, on the board of selectmen, we had a DPW subcommittee. and. Uh, that DPW subcommittee wanted to get into, as you may recall, Chris, they wanted to get into the wastewater treatment plant and get detailed information because there was concern about the health of the wastewater treatment plant. Management denied that access. So, yeah, I am I'm aware of the problem in general, and I'm also aware that the pipes probably are secondary. But this smells, from a political point of view, a lot like the pipes last year. Oh, it's an emergency. Hurry up and do it. Don't bother looking too closely. Just pass it. All right. I want to look more closely. That's where I'm coming from, Regina. I do not oppose it. I'm, I'm as open-minded as I was last year regarding the sewer pipes. In fact, I think this is probably a better approach to doing the than the sewer pipes were last year. There's a stronger argument for it. But still, there's more information I want to have before I make a recommendation to the voters whether to vote for it or not. That's Thank you, fine. Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you very much, Tim. Anybody else have any comments, questions? Seeing none, those uh, in favor of this Warren article, please raise your hands. We have um, everyone in favor, those opposed, and those abstaining. I'm opposed. Okay, Tim Jones is opposing, everybody else approved. Tim, do you have something to... Yes, uh, like even to though say? I was opposed on the last, I'm inclined to support it ultimately and call for a revoke when I get more information, okay? Um, the uh, DPW vehicle purchase, which has been radically modified from previous board selections meetings uh, for $50,000 for the purchase of a yard horse tractor. One more minute. Do I have a second on that, please? Second. Okay, we have a motion by Tim Jones, seconded by fifty thousand dollars is hardly worth talking about. Steve Henderson and the amount Faber was fifty thousand dollars, and we did talk about this at once before, the last time you were in, and I think I called it a yard boy or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Close a yard, enough. A yard horse, whatever. But we did talk about this, and and. Anybody have anything they'd wish to say about this? No. Seeing none, those in favor, raise your hands, please. It's unanimous. Thank you very much. Mr. Chairman, yes, uh, sir. move the lease purchase trash trucks for... I'm not quite sure what, which one it is. is it the appropriate sum of 124000 well, yes. it's all the, the it's units in the amount of six hundred twenty thousand. The raise and appropriate part is one hundred twenty-four thousand because it's a five-year lease. Is that correct? Correct. 
Yeah, yeah but it's a $620,000 commitment. Okay, well, perhaps, hold on. You're going to make that motion? I'm trying to. I can read the whole thing if you'd like, and that'll be pretty Go easy. ahead, and I'll, I'll move what you read. How's Shall that? the town, okay, lease purchase trash trucks. Shall the town of Hampton vote to authorize the Board of Selectmen to enter into a five-year lease purchase agreement for two Mack cab over trucks with Labrie automated side loader body units in the amount of $620,000 and to raise and appropriate the sum of $124,000 to fund said lease purchase agreement in one year. Said lease purchase agreement shall contain a non-appropriation clause. This is a special warrant article per RSA 33 colon 3 comma Roman numeral 6 and shall not lapse until the purchases are completed or by March 31st, 2023 whichever is seen. Majority vote required, re recommended by the Board of Selectmen, 4 to 0. <coughs> Moved by uh, Mr. Jones and he Steve Henderson seconded. Mr. Chair. And discussion, or would you like to? Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. Uh, why are we leasing and not buying? <coughs> it's a lease to own. We'll own them after five years. We will own them. Yes. So why are we using a lease at all? Why aren't we just buying them? Because of the cost. Fifteen million dollar, thirteen million dollar, uh, uh, Warren article for the wastewater treatment plant, with a host of all the other, as uh, Selectman Barnes said earlier, with a host of all the other financial requests being made, um, they, <coughs> they, the board, and through the manager's office, directed me to find another way to acquire this equipment at okay, this time so this at a is, lower this cost. This is a lease to own. So at the end this of the lease, do we have to put up money to, to actually purchase it? The first year payment when they arrive will be $124,000. And is it $124,000 for five years? It is the same payment for five years. And when the five-year lease is over, we own it? They own it. And this we is somehow uh, less expensive than, say, bonding and buying? <coughs> A brand new truck was three hundred thousand, uh -huh. and it would take us uh, over a year to get it. And the lease will enable us to get it faster. The lease would enable us to get it faster. Yes. Great, Mr. Chairman, I'm ready to vote in favor for this. Oh, good, good. But Mr. Henderson has some. How old are the say. current trucks that we have now? Current trucks are entering their finishing their sixth and going into their seventh year. So that's about what the average is on the uh, life expectancy of these trucks: six, seven years. No, five. Right. If they hadn't been okay. built the way they were built, the life expectancy would be longer. So they've gotten better now? Uh, yeah, they stopped building them the way. In a couple of the manufacturers decided a number of years ago so that they didn't, and, and Jamie and Fred probably know the, what's the DEF fluid? DEF. Yeah. It's diesel emissions fluid, DEF, DEF, that you, the majority of the fleets out there today add that to their their fuel. It's an injection system, you, but you have to buy the oil. So in an effort to, geez, we can save you the cost of the oil, they, these trucks were outfitted with a reburn system. What they failed to tell you is they, didn't, they don't work good in driving 50 feet and picking up a cart and driving. They basically clog. And we've had to rebuild them thir three times on each truck, a host of $13,000 each time you rebuild them. W the repair cost alone for those three trucks this year, 85000 Last year, 63000 We are rebuying these trucks every year in repairs. We're trying not to... We're trying to... Not get those trucks again. Exactly. <laughs> Understandable. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah and uh, this was also discussed once before. You mm -hmm. might have missed that meeting. Um, and I think last night I heard you say that the uh, life expectancy of these trucks is probably a good 10 years. 10 years. Solid 10 We're going years. for max, okay. which was the recommendation of And And you Mr. also Fluff. mentioned that, um, as well to the selectmen, that you probably never would have bought those trucks. First of all, you didn't buy them because you weren't the director at the time, right. but they were on the lot available because basically nobody else wanted them. So, right. um, so that's any, any other comment about this particular um, Warren article from anybody? Yes, um, Barbara? Can I ask you whether to, to state the amount of money, is it 124000 Is that that's what you're the voting? Raise and appropriate. Or are you voting $120,000? Raise, uh, raise and appropriate $124,000. Well, mm -hmm. nice. Okay, it was moved by Tim, seconded by Steve C. No other. Oh, Sonny, you wanted to uh, yeah, mention something? I understand that it's been raised with the Board of Selectmen 
picking up commercial trash. Companies like Hannaford do their own, you know, there should be a uniform policy in the town. That's not, you know, that's not being addressed at this point. No, it's not. That's not what we're talking about with this no, one. I'm well aware, but okay. I won't So let's, stay, let's so stick with this one article. And so those, seeing no other, oh, is that your hand I'm up? I'm voting, thing? Mr. Chairman. Oh, you're ready to vote. Okay. All those in favor, please raise your hands. It's unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank please you. Please go and enjoy yourself. Merry, <laughs> Merry Christmas, Merry Chris. Christmas. Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Thank, Thank you all. To both of you, and Happy New Year as well. And please tell Frank Swift we all wish him the very best. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Thank up, you. Okay. Up next would be Jamie Sullivan. <laughs> Right. So it's like, I'm going to get those packets to yes. send around. Yes. Yeah. And that's what we did. So those packets are the same ones yeah. that were posted online? Yeah. Yeah. This one. Yeah. Yeah. So they're just a warrant. Yeah. 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 It's the uh, TAs, the cost, and the warrant. On one of them, I only saw the warrant article, not the right TAs. So. They're all in one click, Tim. They should all be listed together. Just keep scrolling down. I got, like, a bunch of copies of that. Well, if you hand them out, I'll just read them out the paper. Could do that, too. So here's the Maureen and... Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay, could we do the? Um, you want to do a one year contract? Oh, yes, yeah, absolutely. Could we do the? So, these? can I move article uh, for the uh, International Brotherhood of Teamsters Local Six Three Three? Yes, that, okay. That's the one I just handed out first. I'll hand them out one at a time so we don't get confused. So, Barbara, we have a motion by Tim Jones and seconded by Mr. Henderson. Um, so, Jamie, go ahead, please. How would you like to proceed? Do you want to read through the Warren article directly, or are you fine waving that? And I'll just get right um, to the, Tim, the details. I consider it read as written. Read as written, okay. And, and I'd be happy if you just go over the absolute high points of the essence of this contract. How short do you want them? Short as you can make it and still be sensible. So, the Teamsters, as you globally, I'll tell you that there are several things we dealt with for all of this, uh, and they are um, colas, raises. Uh, and this is for all three of the units on Quick Global. Um, and we dealt with some insurance issues that are in there, health insurance issues. Again, the big things that the board has been focused on and those back committee has been working on, our team has been working on, is dealing with uh, the ACA Cadillac tax issue, a transition from uh, a health care, or I should say a prescription plan, that's no longer going to be offered. We had to transition folks off of that to something different. Uh, and a couple of the minor things each. So I'll start with the Teamsters. The Teamsters contract that was settled is for a three-year term, for calls for 333. Um, there are some language issues that we changed that dealt with the recognition clause, the disciplinary procedure, no cost issues with those. Um, this health insurance, as we discussed, all of our units, we've been transitioning the opt-out provision. That is, if you choose to come off of the town's insurance, uh, we will give you a stipend for doing so. We've increased that from what it currently is to 2,000, 3,000, or 4,000 for a single double family. Um, those plans range anywhere from a low of, say, 10,000 to a high of close to 30. So we thought that was a good idea. Uh, the Cadillac tax, we talked about this previously. Cadillac tax is a part of the ACA. And what that says is it identifies, uh, it's still law, it's, it's been kicked down the road a little bit, but we felt it was very important to protect the taxpayers should um, that, that tax hit. It was unclear who that would hit, and in all likelihood it would have been shared by the town. So it's very important for us to negotiate a protection in there for the town. <coughs> what we've done in each of the units is basically uh, got an agreement that says if the ACA should hit, we have a high tax plan or a high Cadillac tax plan that, that triggers. Uh, either the member would choose to stay on that plan and pay 100% of that tax, or they would move to a plan that's below that number and not implicate the tax. In either position, it saves the town. Um, in addition, again, as I talked about, it's the transition. These guys, I, I misspoke at the beginning, it's a three-year term with the Teamsters for 272727, two, not 333. Three. I apologize. Questions on that? I was going to I was going to comment that I'm looking at the back page and it's 2.7. Yeah, thank you. And I also noticed that the um, last year you were presenting this not last year last night you were presenting it to the board of selectmen. We did. And I noticed now that it's been signed off. It was I signed off previously. It was as well. Yes. Okay, and agreed yes. upon. 
Yep. Um, okay. So. so last night was a ratification by them. Both Teamsters and Fire have both ratified. Pardon me, I'm doing it again. Uh, Fire and SEA have already ratified by their unions. The Teamsters have yet to do so. Okay, okay. good. Thank you. Uh, any any questions or comments? Uh, David, go ahead first, please. Yeah, could you help me understand, um, in reference to these contracts that get done with the, the union, who negotiates with the union from the town here? Right, so the, the board, yeah, the, there's a team of us. The board appoints the team. I was the lead negotiator for the team and involved Mr. Bean, um, uh, Attorney Gerald, myself, and Ms. Barnes joined us for a number of the sessions as well. So that's the team that negotiates for the town. The board sets their goals <coughs> and gives direction to the team. We meet with the union who has their representatives that their union appoints and often have many times an attorney that, that comes in with them. And we go back and forth on our issues. It takes months to do so. And we go back and forth and come to what you see in front of you here, which referred to as a tentative agreement. Process-wise, that then goes back to each of those groups. That we go back to the board for approval. They go back to their union for approval. Once those are there, we come before the, the, the voters. That's basically the process. What I've noticed, I was here last year, mm -hmm. a lot of Teamsters or whatever union, whatever you want to call them, the groups, the unions, were 3% for all of different various employees, firemen, policemen, uh, the number 3%. At the same time, we had brought up the fact about Social Security. We, for like the past four years, a lot of people, there was no increase at all. There was one this past year for 2%. But before then, it was nothing and nothing and nothing. So if you average that out, you're getting about, there's a certain number of people in Hampton, for example, who basically probably have 50% of their income coming from so people over 65. I'm just referring to. In, in today's world of the low inf inflation being as, as low as it is and the low interest you're getting, to me, it, it, like, for example, I think what, what I heard that the, 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 the selectmen did last year, they actually lowered a, a I think it was a 2% down a, 1.7 or something of that. 1.65 was, 1. The, was 1. the raise that was given to non-union members. That's yeah. correct. The non-union is 1.65, and a lot of the people in union are getting either 3% or this year it's better than 3%. It's like 2%. Why were they always getting much higher than the average person? I mean, it, it's like their raises are going up like this and nobody else is like this. Well, so there are a couple of things that, that go into that equation. First, as we talked about last year, keep in mind that for, I think it was approximately six years, the unions went with no raises. So you looked over that 10-year period. Without no raises? Six, six years, years, contracts were negotiated. They failed. And it was about six or seven years they went with zero. <coughs> so you're looking over that longer 10-year period. We talked about this last year. So we'll take that union discussion. That's something for folks to consider across there. Um, we now are back to, if you look across the state, these are, these are numbers that are fairly standard across the state, depending on your benefit packages and what have you. We found, and the board's direction was, they found these were reasonable numbers. That's what we went forward with. With regard to the non-union, the board directed this year, and we're in the middle of doing a salary study. When they looked at salaries, they said, okay, we're going to go with that 165 this year, but we want to go do a study and see how competitive our numbers are. That's underway now. Good. We're going to see the results of that in the coming month or so. Um, and then I suspect the board will take that information next year and act on it. And I suspect, based on the preliminary data, you'll find that a number of the positions in those non-union are below market level. Below market level. And then it'll be up to the board to decide whether to address it, and if so, how much we'll choose to address that. Thank okay, you. I hope that answers your question. Thank you. All set, David. Yes. Okay, thank you. You know, it's interesting that you ask um, the people that are in the union are getting 2.7 or whatever, 3% and the non-union people. I guess that's why they're in a union. <laughs> so they can there have many, somebody negotiate for them. You there know? are many other factors. All right. Oh, you, keep in oh, mind, our, our union groups, you have the two, the, the three or well, five, it's the police, fire, uh, SEA, public works, and then the Teamsters, which covers a myriad of folks, right? Great. A lot of those folks... You know, very high risk, high uh, demand jobs. I worked one of those for many years. I, I sit at a desk. I don't have that same level of risk that the guy pushing a cruiser or that person running in to save someone or doing an ambulance fall. Those are different issues. And, and those employees, that is the board's direction to us, has been to go in and negotiate those in a reasonable way. And that's what I think we've achieved. And I, I want to also point out that... Um, at least one of these is left over from last year that didn't pass. Am I correct? Um, actually, all three failed last year. Oh, Teamsters is in their second year of failure. Passed. 
the fire offices, which is next, they failed last year, and okay. so did SEA. Okay. Okay. Teamsters is on two two years in a row. I think that's one of the reasons you see 2727, and there were other things in there previously that were removed. Okay. Um, <coughs> that It's a straightforward 27 plus the insurance issues that are beneficial to both sides, especially the town. Okay, I stand okay. corrected. Thank you very much. Um, Steve Henderson, you've had your hand up. Yeah, I'll make it real minutes. brief. Um, this group here, the Teamsters, you know, the last several years uh, – is it failed? Sometimes I think it's because of the. I want to throw it out there, the teams, the name. But this is a hard-working group of individuals that work in this town. You know, it's a various group. You know, they're hard-working. They're probably some of the lower-paid skill um, employees of this town, and they deserve a raise. It's been a, it's been many years since they've gotten one, and they deserve it. They're hard-working, and uh, hopefully the. Uh, taxpayers will see through it and not the teams to name but let's look at the individuals that are in this group let's look at the groups and let's vote for them so hopefully uh, this group will uh, get a raise this year because they deserve it and if i can add on to that to, to mr henderson's point teamsters is also fairly unique in that they're spread out across a number of different parts of our town you know and, and it is we have police dispatchers in there and some of the civilian employees in the police department are in there folks from the town office and some of the senior folks, the management folks, or supervisory, senior supervisory folks down at Public Works. Sometimes that, I think, works against them as well because they're, they're, they're a spread out group. They're very focused this year. They understand what they need to do. They're going to try and get their message out. I think it's important for all of us to support that as well. Um, and so I, I completely agree with Mr. Henderson said that there's some challenges there that I think we all can do uh, a lot to help uh, get that message out and let the voters decide. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, Tim, you had your hand up. <coughs> Steve, are you done? I'm done. Okay. Tim, you had your hand up. Please. Yeah, that's what we're here for, is to help the voters decide. Up, or, up or down. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I mentioned the contracts, them being a contract, like a 10-year period. Uh, no, I did mention a contract 10-year period. I mentioned a period of time. In which there was no contract. Correct. Right. And that period of time was like... Uh, uh, ended around 2012, didn't it? That sounds about right. I don't have the data in front of me, but that yeah. sounds about right. Right. So it was it was kind of like 2002, 2006 to 2012, and then they started getting contracts done. In fact, that's when the cost of negotiating the contracts went from 100,000 plus per year to 20,000 dollars or less per year. Right around 2012. And negotiating the cost of that. Uh, yeah, negotiating. Yeah, negotiating. Yeah, yeah. Well, the, the, the legal fees actually is something the boards talked about a number of times. Um, the legal fees were pretty substantial for a number of years in those negotiations that went on for a long period of time. Right, during that, during that void when no. there was no contract, well, there was a lot of grievances filed. There were a lot of non-contracts. They weren't even negotiated for Right, there were grievances filed during that period. Not many, actually. 2008. Eight is when it stopped or yeah. started? 2008 is when the first failed. Right, and then went on for a six-year period. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, just wanted to get that cleared. Uh, we've been out of that phase for quite some time. We have? Yeah, so... It really isn't in play but, presently. But to the question of comparing to year after year, we felt last year, that was discussed about last year, we talked about that time period last year we did that comparison. And that's one of the reconsiderations the board took into effect of dealing with these issues, mm -hmm. dealing with our employees. When the contracts started getting enacted, they got, you know, um, you know eight, ten year step increases all in one shot. Uh, so they were brought up, to, brought up to speed pretty quickly once the contracts got, uh, got going again, got, got approved again around 2012, 2013 time frame. That would be and your so, opinion. I don't know that I would agree with that, but that's, uh, that's your opinion. Well, they, they, they seem to agree because they, they agreed with those contracts. That, that they satisfied. did? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Anyway, um, I noticed in, in here that, uh, first of all, the Teamsters, which is what we're talking about right now, Teamsters right. Local 633, uh, this is also the union that uh, the uh, clerks in the town clerk's office that is correct. are yes. under, right? And, and a number of people are under this, as we said, it's a diverse Others group. as well. Yeah. Very diverse yeah. group. Right. Now, is there, we don't have the contract in front of us, of course. We just have the TA, which These is fine. Are, if I can, what you have, the tentative agreement, I understand. are yeah. those items that would be changed, changed. in the contract. Right. That's it. So I have a question about the existing situation. Is this going quick enough for you, or is this taking long enough? Oh, no, I'm, I'm very rapid. 35 hours. Is that defined anywhere? What is the what is full time defined as in the teams' contract? Uh, I'd have to pull the contract out. I'd have to pull that out. Uh, but there's a in the town. The town handbook generally sets what it is. Most places people think of forty hours. Most contracts that's the case. Right. I understand this came up 
Uh, quite frankly, I have to read that to be sure. Uh, the town had defined uh, a, a part-time and full-time in one of their policies as 35. Very few people fall. Well, it's 35 hours. A department did? No, the town of Hampton's personnel policies. Uh -huh. They had their setup of, of it, it said, above 35 hours. So there are some employees that are 35 hours defined as full-time. Um, so with regard to specific to your question, I can get back to you. I don't have that in front of me, and off the top of my head, I don't want to answer you correctly. Okay. You don't believe it's in the contract, but you want to confirm that before you say no, definitively, No, I, I have right? to look into the contract to be sure. Okay. All right. Mr. Chairman, can we uh, expect uh, to uh, get that information to you, distributed to the entire budget committee, hopefully uh, as a Christmas present? How's that? Okay. We'd like it soon because you, You're saying we're, with we're regard to only the Teamsters? Uh, well, actually, I think the question applies to all the contracts. I'm just, just the topic, as you know, to came up you? about the Teamsters. So the Teamsters are the ones that we're most sensitive to right now. That's what we're talking but about. But we'd like to know universally as well. Sure. Okay. Um, and I also want to note this this uh, changed um, sentence here, which is in the TA. The current <laughs> positions will remain non union positions <laughs> until the current employees vacate those positions. Mm -hmm. So if, if a department head moves a person that is presently non-union into a pre-existing non-union position, then that becomes a union position, is that right? No. In okay. this particular case, there are certain positions that, in a contract, uh, there is a ratification, there is a, cla a recognition, recognition clause. Yeah. That clause spells out who's covered, All right. right? In the Teamster contract, there were certain positions that were spelled out. All right. At some point along the way, some of those positions, which are identified in the recognition clause, right. came out of that to be non-union. Right. There is a specific process by law that has to be followed in order for that to occur. There's no record of that taking place. Right. What we're doing here is rectifying that issue by saying, look, that happened. We both agree it happened. Uh, there's no real record of it. We're going to comply with the contract's original intent and restore that so it's very clear. That's yeah, what I'm not objecting to it. I want to understand it. I'm I, want, to I want to understand it with a hypothetical because I'm too simple. I need an example. Okay. So we've got a person that's in a presently non-union position, right? And they're moved into a non-union position that's actually now specified that can be become union if someone populates it, right? Let me give you this. The, the way it actually happened, Tim, you are in a position that is covered by a union contract. No, that's not the example I'm using. I understand. I'm trying to explain to you what happened so it's clear to folks. So you're in a position, or person A is in a position that was covered by a union contract. There's a decision made and no actions taken to take your position and you and move you into a non-union role. There's a process required by law to do that that wasn't followed. What we're doing is now saying, look, we recognize that that process wasn't followed. We're going to correct that. But instead of spilling the apple cart, we all recognize that didn't happen. We all recognize that that has to be repaired. We're going to wait until you leave your position before we restore it back to the union position so that there's no change. Everybody understands it's coming, all that sort of stuff. So that's how we address that issue. Right. So when someone comes in to fill my now vacant position, they instantly become union. That, that position is restored as it was under the recognition clause and is recognized as a union position, yes. Right. Unless the town and that, that union decide to negotiate it out of the recognition clause. Yeah, this, this has serious implications in, in terms of both the full-time definition and why the town clerk is moving a person from bookkeeper to senior bookkeeper and then to assistant town clerk. Because I think by doing so, she's actually causing those positions to instantly become unionized, which is what she said she was trying to do. And that is the mechanism by answers the question, why is she doing that? I think that might be the reason. We'll probably need to have her back in to explain that. But first, we need to get a definition of what full-time well, means to be clear, in the, the team's the, the, contract. What you just said. I said, I think. I'm not sure. Yeah, and to yeah. be clear, that is not correct. Okay, we'll find out. Well, I just told you it's not correct. No, I'm going to find out from Those Jane. positions are currently union positions. In one case, she is intending basically to promote one person in the union to another union position <coughs> and hire somebody oh, into that position. I thought she said they were not union. No, that's my, that's, that's my understanding of what they she, are. She yeah. didn't say that? Okay, well, we'll get it cleared up eventually. Sorry? She said they were union. Yeah. yeah. All right, we'll get it cleared up eventually. Well, maybe you'll but, understand it that way. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's what I'm trying good. to do. Good. So the key is getting the definition for full-time. I thank you, Jamie. Happy I look to forward that. to the Christmas present.
good for you. Okay, just to be clear, so you're going to send me something? So he's There's a question with regard to what the contract says and defined in, on full time. I'll look that up and be happy to send get it, it back to you. Me and then They're I'll online. They can be looked at by anybody, but I'll be happy to look that up. If you send that to me, Jane, sure. only, then I will make sure it's distributed to everybody else. And before Sonny, um, I want to ask one question that occurred to me the other night because of this the situation with the, the budget with the um, certain department. So full time under um, the union is 35 hours, is that correct? Yeah, that's the question that needs to be answered. Most okay. everybody, it's a 40 hour work week. Fire's different, they have a different standard, but generally it's 40 hours. Okay, um, and so what is part time? How many hours is part time <laughs> under your union? Is that 32? Uh, well, right now the policy in general from the Board of Selectmen with respect to positions is not to exceed 28 hours in a week. That has a tie that by law, federal law, ties to 30 hours, which is a definition under the ACA for full time. And the key function there is that if you work over 30 hours, the town is then obligated to offer insurance. And that's a trigger that we do not want to, in this case, deal with. So part-timers are not to exceed 28. There are some exceptions based on contract issues myself. I'm a 32-hour mm -hmm. uh, a, a week employee. So in general, it's 28 hours. Okay, that's why I, I mentioned 32 because I knew that that was your, the conditions Correct. of your, your um, contract. It is. Okay. Chairman, if I may finish. Well, oh, I thought you were finished. No. Oh, now, Tim, I, you, you defined yourself before as, was it rapid? It, was that with a Morgan P or a D? A Morgan. Rapid. Rabbit. I could be rabbit. I could be rabbit. Yeah. I, I, wanted, I just want to make sure we understood. Hold on, Sonny. I thought Tim was done. Go ahead, please. Um, yeah, I lost my thought. Oh, yeah. Uh, when do you anticipate the, uh, the Teamsters Union will vote on this? Uh, my understanding is they were scheduling it. So I suspect, I don't know, but I suspect by the end of the week. I had a conversation with their steward uh, yesterday, and they okay. were trying to reach out to their representative. Thank up you. In thank you. Mr. Chairman, I think it's more appropriate that we only vote on. Uh, on uh, these when the union has already done so. They've already done so on the other two, so I'm happy to vote on those. But this one, uh, we should wait on. This is to, um, to recommend him. We're not going to affect it in any way. It's my opinion, that's it. all. Doesn't Thank you very Always much. in the minority. Okay, Tim, do you have anything? No, I'm done. Thank you. Absolutely, officially done. Okay, thank you very much. Sonny, you've, please. Uh, yeah, I'll try ahead. to remember what I wanted to ask. Uh, I'm curious, each contract, how many people in each contract, how many non-union employees, and, and the health insurance for the non-union employees. Is it the same con health care con con a choice of contracts? Is it the premium the same for non-union and stuff union in there. fire? And there are a whole bunch of questions. Yeah. Um, so let's do a global. Yeah. What we're talking about on this is the, the teamsters. teamsters. They are all union people. There are 25 employees in this unit. Um, it, you've talked about some other stuff. Are they all the same? In this unit, every contract identifies certain medical. There's variances between different unions of what they select. So we have a number of plans that are offered by the town, and folks can choose what they want. The premiums vary based on what level of plan you choose and what you're, whether you're a yeah. single family. Well, my question or was whether... The the non-union employees, the same choices and the same cost for the health insurance? In general, yes. Yeah, okay. uh, there are other things that the contracts deal with, this, right. but in general, you're, you're yes to that question. Okay. And the fire and the police, number one in the contract. Again, individual units may choose different things, but the town's offerings are generally the same. Yeah, okay. Okay. All set, Sonny? Oh, no, I asked how many people in each. In this team. unit is 25. Yeah, that's the team's just... I, was I thought we would take them one at a time. Yeah, the fire. Yep. We'll, we'll do them one at a time as we go through. I'll yeah, tell you how many when I go over the next two. How's that? Okay. Okay. All right. All set, Sonny? Yep. Okay. Thank you very much. Oh, David, go ahead. Just to talk about what came up last week. Okay. When the lady was speaking, she wanted another assistant or whatever, and she talked about the fact that it was a 35-hour week. She was specific that we had come up with that she really needed 40 hours. Uh, that was the discussion. And I remember... I. I said to her, I'm not going to vote for this Warren article because I think you should work 40 hours and you're telling me the Teams is only allowed for 35. If you get 40, I that would particular back job. you. That, it was that, that was, important. 
I know, but that was that particular job. Agreed. Right. Okay. Because it, Jamie but it'd be just nice said to know all of them, and he's going to get that information. But I'm just we'll get it. I'm, I'm being told by Christy that the contract does not say 35. So I'll get that to you, and we'll we'll go from there. Thank you very much. Okay, David. We're, we're going to get that. That'll hopefully for uh, your Christmas stocking. Okay. So David, yes, sir. That actually applied to all the employees in that office, um, and I have gotten other people to confirm, but I'd like management to confirm it. That's why we want that Christmas present, so that we can base it on management's uh, sure. estimation. Uh, but I'm quite confident that it is not defined there as well. Um, but I look forward to the official communique on that, so that we can then act accordingly. David, are you finished? I'm done, thank you. Thank you very much. And I know, <coughs> Tim, you said you were done before. Um, does anybody else have anything to say about this particular thing? Seeing none, those that want to move this to recommend, please raise your hands. Every, um, we've got everyone, uh, the nays and the abstain. I abstain. Okay. So David abstained. Tim is a no. Everybody else is a yes, Barbara. Okay. Now we're going to go on to the <coughs> fire. To the fire. Yep. Please. And let me just pass out quickly. Two, three, four. For yeah. this side, send those down, please. We want four for this side. Tim, do you want one or not? Oh, absolutely. Oh, okay. I can't have too much information. There you go. That's right. Send one to Barbara, please, as well. Well, as you're passing those out, I'll quickly go over it. If um, you would, please. Yep. This is the fire supervisors. It deals with the officers, the lieutenants, the captains, the deputy chief, uh, and the folks in fire prevention, EMS officer. Um, the only one in, the, in that group who is not part of it is the chief of the fire department. Um, this group um, are line firefighters. They're the officers who supervise. They ride the trucks. They go out. The deputy chief does administrative work. The fire prevention and EMS officers have administrative functions, but they oversee fire prevention person deals with um, um, all the building inspections, the safety issues. That's what they deal with. And the EMS officer oversees our paramedic program, our medic program, to see we're in compliance and movement. So those are the folks who make up this group. Um, and uh, their agreement is, is essentially a mirror of what we did last year for a two-year term, to reduce to a two-year term. Uh, two years at three includes the same provisions with regard to the health insurance I discussed previously of the other groups. Um, the other addition we did do with them is uh, they do not have steps in their contract that many others do. So we did see this year to deal with uh, uh, education incentive, which happens in other contracts. Uh, that is, if you have a certain number of credits for uh, college credits or an associates or a bachelor's, there's a stipend that can come for that, three, five, or a thousand, as well as a recognition for some longevity pay based on certain milestones they reach. Um, that's basically that contract. Um, be happy to answer any questions you have with regard to this unit. Okay. And again, Sonny, it's 13 members in that unit. 13 in that, okay, good. So, um, this time, uh, uh, go ahead, Tim. This time, I really will be brief. I don't have a question, but I do have a statement. Go ahead. It's too generous. Uh, and it's above the, uh, inflation, uh, the uh, inflation that we receive in, say, Social Security tax, for example. Um, and uh, so I am happy to and ready to vote no on this whenever you're ready to call for the vote, Mr. Chairman. All right. I told you I'd be fast. All right. Thank, Thank you. you so much. And uh, Mr. Henderson, you wanted to say Very something. Very brief. This is another uh, hard-working uh, group in the town of Hampton, being the fire supervisors. They've been out of contract for several years, and I will vote in favor of it when it comes time to vote. All right. Anybody else have a question or comment for uh, Mr. Sullivan? Seeing none, those in favor of recommending this for the uh, warrant? And we have um, everybody voting yes, and we, David, how are you voting? No. David's voting no, and Mr. Jones is nay. Is a no, so two no's, Barbara. Okay. All right. So moving Excuse right. Excuse me. Can I have the, who, who made the vote? The, who who made the motion, please? I did. Mr. Henderson seconded. Thank you. Okay. <coughs> so next, next, we have. Did I send some that we already yeah. the final one coming to you is public works employees. Okay. All right. Okay. It's the SEA. There's other legal jargon. The SEIU local 1984. But basically, these are our public works folks. There are 33 members of this unit. Um, and again, this group um, is a three-year agreement. 
333 over the three years. There were some language changes with regard to some hours. We did add an uh, a, a, a education thing with this group, but we focused on this program called the um, Road Scholar. And what Road Scholar is is uh, specific training that people achieve in order to better take care of our highways, safety issues, that type of stuff. We had a couple of highest level, what's called Master Road Scholar, um, and those folks, several of those folks are retiring. One tonight, Mr. Swift is retiring, was a Road Scholar. Um, so this is an incentive program to have other employees uh, increase their training, increase their knowledge that will benefit the town. These are um, individual stipends based on whether or not they hit uh, Road Scholar 1, 2, Senior, or Master. Um, it's 300, 450, 600, or 12. They are not cumulative. It's, it's as you climb the ladder, it goes to that next one. Same thing on the insurance that we did with the others, Cadillac tax, the opt-out provision, the transfer of uh, uh, folks to the new prescription plan. Uh, we also equalized some language with regard to bereavement leave that was absent from their contract. The niece and nephew was added. Uh, it's present in others. And we increased a boot allowance. Previously, it was $150 a year that they were eligible to have reimbursement for boots. Um, we've increased that to 300 and done some language so that we can deal with uh, boots that they're required to have at work. For instance, steel toe. Type That's one of the issues we dealt with. The standard is for steel toe, but there are certain functions that folks do that they're going to allow, based on director's rules, <coughs> to not be steel toe but still be reimbursable. You know, if you're driving a plow truck all night long, you're not out of the plow truck, you don't necessarily need the steel toe boots, things like that, that they'll deal with by policy. When you're in a risk, it'll be a steel toe, but for some of the other functions, if you're in this, you know, the, 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 we see folks at the transfer station on the weekend that sit there and look at you as you come in and check your stickers and make sure you're doing the right thing, they may not necessarily need to wear those, but if they're in the field, they do. So we're going to let them deal with that. Mr. Chairman, if I can move this warrant article for $60,679. Is that right, Jamie? For the first year. Yeah. Or just do as you did with the other two, as written, that would be fine. I'm about to do that. Excellent. And ask that it be considered read as written. Thank you, Tim. I'll Seconded second. by Mr. Henderson. Seconded. Mr. Uh, Chairman, I'm ready to vote no on this for the same okay, reason hold, as the last. Hold on. Barbara, did you get that? Tim moved it to, and uh, Mr. Henderson yes. seconded. All right. Any, um, you have comments, Steve? Yeah, my comment's going to be similar to the last one. This is another group of uh, underpaid employees in this town. We work very hard. They're the guys that pick up the garbage. They sh sh do the streets. They uh, do the hot top, and they take care of a lot of the work. Hard working group. Uh, they've been out of contract for a few years, and uh, it's time these guys get paid uh, what they deserve. So I believe uh, I will certainly vote yes on the uh, public works, gentlemen. Okay. Uh, and Regina, you wanted to add something? I have a question for Jamie. Mm -hmm. When was how, the last time they got the contract passed? Uh, this is the, They failed last year as well, so okay. they're here now. And they're the 33 people versus 25 Correct. and 13. Correct. And I want to say one thing on the firefighters. You know, the town didn't think it too generous, the fire officers, I'm sorry, the town didn't think it too generous last year when they voted yes on the firefighters. So to this day, I'm still baffled why the officers got voted no. And I also don't understand why all our town employees aren't getting the raises that they deserve. Because like with the in infrastructure of the town, without the two, we will not exist. So I really hope that people consider these, look at the money, and then also look at what you get from the service that the people provide. Are you, are you finished? Um, I'm good. Then, thank you very much. Jenny, go ahead. I'm sorry. I have to counter that is we all appreciate the work that the public, public employees do, but we also have to consider the taxpayer and what they've been getting for raises and what they can afford to live in this town. We unfortunately are in an aged population. The aged population is not getting 3%, 3%, 3%. Medicare got 2%, uh, Social Security got 2%, 2, 2, 1.9 was taken by Medicare. So people in here are not voting because they don't think the employees deserve it. They're voting because they, their wallets can't afford it, and that's why a lot of people are doing it. So I think that everyone, everyone values our employees. It's just the ability to pay of the taxpayer on some of those people. Good point. Thank you, Jenny. Anybody? Uh, Sonny. Yeah. All right. The contract covers 71 people. How many more employees? Contract, this contract covers oh, 30 people. Is, I added the three contracts. That's 71 union employees in the town. Mm -hmm. How many non-union employees? That's what I'm trying to say. Uh -oh. 
they have to get you the total number. Okay. I mean, there are two other unions that have folks, and then there's non-union employees. There's numerous part-time people. All right, I'd like a total. Sure. Okay. Okay. Send it to. Understood. Yeah. And as well, Sonny, you have the school district people that are running. Yeah, the, that's well, different well, unions. Well, that, that's in there. That's different. That's a, that's not going to be. Yeah. Jamie won't have those numbers. So, if you send that to me, I'll make sure that I send it oh, out to everybody. The other thing and I noticed. Uh, Somewhere I read the state's concern that 70 percent of state employees are double dippers and they're trying to work some legislation through to limit the... There are a number of pieces of legislation. There's one in particular that's before uh, uh, the legislature right now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All set, Sonny? Yep. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Henderson? Yeah, just brief. I agree, Jenny, what you're talking about as far as the increases. On the other side, though, all right, if we're talking 333, but we're not talking about what they've given up, you know. There's other things in here that they've had to give up. So it's not really 333. What have they given up, you know? So it's really less than 333. When you see what they've given up, if it's medical, if it's more money they're paying for prescriptions or co-pays, et cetera. So in their pocket, it's not a 333. Hold on, Jenny. Really? Don't, don't, be just, That's don't, don't be just cutting back and forth. Uh, I'm, I'm, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah. Are you finished, Steve? I'm done. Okay. Did you want to say something? I just want to say, see that at, at the worst of what they've given up, and some of these people haven't even hit. So, you know, I think that's a lot of times we blame the taxpayers because they don't vote for things they can't. Yep. Okay. Thank you, Jenny. And, oh, yeah, there is one other thing, if I may, that, that was just triggered in my head. I, I missed, ahead. I didn't identify in the fire officers, in addition to the other items I told you they have agreed to contribute more towards their health insurance. Uh, as happened with the firefighters, that's included in the TA as well. They will begin paying um, more towards their health insurance. It's 1% and then another half a percent over the two years. So uh, it's my fault for neglecting to indicate that. Okay, thank you for mentioning. Well, we're talking about SE. I see how you now, right now. I'm and, just uh, trying to be clear. So I understand that. I just want to be yeah. clear that what, what I'm talking about now is that. And you know, Mr. Henderson brings up an interesting point in what they're giving up. They give up their health insurance because they have a, a better health insurance plan somewhere else. And they get, a, they get a stipend for giving it up. So they actually get paid for giving it up, for getting a better plan. So I don't think that's giving up something. But I'll tell you, the people that Jenny was talking about, when they give up something, there's nothing there behind them. <laughs> yeah. All right, Their prescriptions go up, and guess what? They, they bear every penny of that. They don't, they don't take the and their prescriptions are numerous yes, those because are of the rate. So and you're talking about many years of 0% increase in, in Social Security. It, it, it's, in my opinion, I shared with Jenny. Jenny and I don't agree on a lot of things, but <laughs> on this we agree. And from my point of view... You know, when I look at this, one of the perspectives I take on all these votes is those really old people that are really on the precipice of being self-sustaining or not. You know, one more dollar might put them over the top and they can no longer, you know, support themselves for independent living. You know, and there's always those people there. You know, you just wonder how many you lose every year. Because they're always very, you never hear about them because they're silent. They just kind of disappear. You know, but they're, they're real people. Yes, thank you, Tim. Now, of course, we can have a discussion all night about uh, society, but, you know, that's, life is... We're talking about being sensitive to all people. We have to be sensitive to everyone. Thank you. Did, um, is that it for this conversation? I hope so. Okay. Um, all those in favor of recommending this, please raise your hands. And we have um, everybody on this side, all the way over to Steve Henderson. Those against? <laughs> Those against? I'm, I'm not joining Jenny on the vote, I guess. Okay. <laughs> Barbara, Barbara, the nays are David and Mr. Jones again. I think we're done. Thank you Mr. very much. Sullivan, thank you very much. And thank you, Jamie. Christy. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Okay. And so now, Christy, did you want to come up, please? Oh, I wish you would. You can come up and sit right down. And I'm going to give you a Christmas present. Oh, thank you. Yeah, when their spouse has a better plan. What I have done is I have come up with what I believe to be all of the adjustments that have been made by the budget committee. Oh, good. This I is a, a summary This is a surprise. Oh, is this the housekeeping thing you're talking to me about? <laughs> no. Oh, this is called This is what I believe to be budget. all of the adjustments okay. that were made by this board. So I'm giving it to you guys so you have so a, a chance report. to review okay. it. Thank you. So you guys can view it before we meet and 
because I made a mistake. But that's what I believe to be all of your adjustments. I also have attached a sheet that is similar to the DRA summary so that all of the line items match up with the DRA and what the amounts are in your guys' budget that you guys, um, that I believe you have uh, you. made the adjustments to. So I just wanted to give that to you guys tonight so that you can have it to review before your final review, which I believe is scheduled for um, January 9th. Okay, thank you so, so much. Do we and, have more on our and, coming? Hold on, hold on. Okay, this is this is the the new bottom line since we've made some changes um, right. over the last several meetings. Right. And I would very much entertain a motion to for the uh, the new number, twenty seven million three hundred and fifty five thousand three hundred and twenty five dollars. Would somebody like to make a motion to move that? But you may be able to adjust that. That's why I can adjust it. Okay. The final. We can okay. Still wait. We can still make that. We can still do Quite that. multiple times on this. We can still do that if we need to the next meeting when we have our chance to make a <coughs> final budget review. Would somebody make that motion, please? So moved. Second. Okay. Moved by Ginny, seconded by Regina. I, any discussion? I don't think we need to discuss this. We've gone over all of this. This is what we came up with collectively. So I have a statement to make. I am not going to vote for this because we're going to be voting for adjustments anyway, so the vote is pointless. So I'm not voting in favor of this. Okay, that's fine. You can vote your conscience as always. I would always want everybody to do that. Those in favor of this, please. So we have, Sonny, are you in favor? Okay, so we have everybody all the way to Steve Henderson again. Those against would be Mr. Uh, David and also Mr. Jones. And Mr. Chairman. Hold on. Uh, Barbara, did you... Ginny made the motion. It was seconded by Regina. I'll repeat the number one more time for you. 2735-325. Thank you very much. And anything else? Um, anything else? No, I'm working on the gasoline and diesel line items, which I'll be bringing back to you. And if anyone um, sees any errors that were made here or doesn't feel that a motion was recorded properly to, for the adjustments you guys made, if you could just let me know that we so that when I come will. on the ninth, I can have um, the corrections will. for yeah. you. Thank you. That's so why I wanted to get this to you tonight. And it's a big surprise. Max, guess what? I got a number, you know, because I told Max earlier, because you had sent me an email, you didn't think you'd have it ready, but thank you very much. Mr. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. May I ask the finance director some questions, please? Oh, you, you certainly can. Thank you. She just came to give you the Christmas present. She didn't come to answer questions. <laughs> it sounds like you're catching a cold or something, is it? Yes. Yeah, sorry to hear that. I'm sure he caught it. Um, <laughs> yeah, he caught it. Yeah. Um, we have the gasoline diesel adjustments, so, and there are personnel administration adjustments, right? They need to be made, as I recall. No, they should be on your sheet here, hopefully. Okay. Um, the only thing that adjusted in that, those lines were the 620 or 650 that was added back in for the town clerk. So then that yeah. adjusted the Medicare, Social Security, and retirement lines. Oh, you know. But that, it's reflected on your sheet. Okay. The, um, Go ahead, Tim. When will you be uh, ready for the gas adjustments? So we have before Christmas. Yeah, that's why I'm asking because we have a, a schedule for, I believe, the ninth for the final review, Mr. Chairman. But uh, we have snow days for second and four. And I think there may be more adjustments coming. So maybe we should use the second or four, probably the second, in case it does snow in the second, we can then use the four, uh, to make these uh, adjustments with the gasoline. So, so that Chris, uh, Christy knows that maybe we're going to be doing it on the second, so she knows the date where we're going to be working with. Um, also, uh, if I could ask the manager if he's anticipating more money worn articles. Yes. In the board? Yes. In the board? All right. and, and when would those be, uh, would you expect those to be ready? Uh, there'll be petition articles as far as I know. There's at least one coming in. Oh, citizen petitions? Yeah. Okay. So are there any more board assignments that we know? There may be. I just may don't, don't know at this point. But the board doesn't meet again until January 8th, correct? That's correct. Right, yeah. so we won't see those until the 9th anyway. So we could be burdened on the 9th, so we ought to clear up as everything we can before the 9th because there may be a whole bunch of stuff coming at us on the 9th that we can't anticipate. So that's why I'm saying we ought to do everything we can on the 2nd so that we can be as clean as possible on our 9th. How many more um, warrant articles do we have coming, Fred, do you think? 
I know of at least one. I know the one through the grist mill thing that yeah. you talked about last night. So there, there are some rumors that there are others out there, so I just can't okay. tell you until I see them. Okay. Um, okay, thank you. Tim, uh, hold on just for a minute. I want to, I've almost forgot, and since everybody's right here and we're talking about this budget. No, that's all I got. Yeah. Um, today, Donna Bennett sent a, she sent it on the 18th. Okay. <laughs> What's today? 19th. 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 She sent out a, an email to um, Christy Fred, uh, the chairman of the. Um, Board of Selectmen and also to me. This is in response to Sonny's question. Since Jane asked and was approved to get the raise of 3% back into her budget, I would like to request in writing that I am allowed to do the same. I am formally requesting that the raise for the tax collector go back to the original 3% as requested and approved by the town manager. Um, she sent me then another, another email, and it's, um, I'm asking that the original 3% be put back into my budget. This would raise my budget by $577, and the bottom line would be whatever. But this would add $577 to that this budget that we just, hold on, that we just passed. Now, Plus I it told. Would add Social Security, Medicare. It's going to change those time. numbers again as well. Okay, good point. Now, I told Donna that I would bring this. Uh, read this first of all and bring it to the attention of this committee what would be the wishes of this committee and Tim and Mr. Chairman this is like one of the things that we deal with I think on the second you know to get our plate as clean as possible for the ninth we can deal with that we have to deal with the definition of full time which has implications on the town clerk budget and warrant article all right and that has to be dealt with as you know <coughs> um, and there is potentially other things that are coming at us as well. We have to review what Christie's got here. There may be adjustments off of this as well, right? Um, so I think we really ought to meet on the 2nd, and if it snows, meet on the 4th, so that we're as up-to-date as possible before the 9th, because we don't know what's coming on the 9th. It could be a whole bunch of work. Yeah, and, okay, and thank you, Tim. That's, that's a, uh, I'll take that under... <laughs> for the moment, under just, the table. just for the just <laughs> under the table, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. But, but the should we deal with this now? Do, does anybody no. want to discuss this now? Um, Absolutely. And the only reason I'm saying this is because the numbers are going to have to be. We can make this adjustment of if this committee wish to um, put the put it back to 3%, $577, but we wouldn't know the final number because then Christie has to rework the, the FICA and all that stuff. There's no so hurry to do I it. I see no no hands going up, so... Yeah. Um, well, so I think it's only fair. It may be. Let's do it on January 2nd. Well, what's the difference for the Actually, there's no difference at all. There's so let's no do it difference. on January 2nd. If I, I, do I have a motion I would something? make a motion to make the tax collector the 3%, the same as the town clerk, because we raised it to 3%, for the town clerk, I feel it's only fair to do it to the tax clerk. Is there a second? A second. Okay. Motion by Ginny. A second by Steve Henderson to put $577 back into the tax collector's, uh, make it her make a 3% raise instead of a 2 that the, re the Board of Selectmen reduced it to. And any, any further discussion on this? Yes. Okay, go ahead, Tim. The argument is to treat the tax collector the same as the town clerk. Yes. Then let us consider that, by all indications, the town clerk came in and misrepresented the union requirements, telling us that the union required her to work, or her people to work, 35 hours. Now, no, every, every indication is that, that she misled us on that or misinformed us, or misrepresented it. I don't want to use the L word here, or but it might apply. It might apply. Misunderstood. Fine. In any case, the, ta the, the tax collector has not done such a thing. So then she deserves a 3% in the... Well, I'm saying they say that you know she deserves the same as the town clerk. I think that's a bogus argument based on recent uh, transformations that have occurred here. Okay. Is that all, Tim? Um... I think that we, we, we haven't finally decided what we're going to do about that situation. 
and so I think we could best decide on the town. Well, I mean, the tax collector after we decide on no, how we we're going to deal with the a, misinformation a, that we have been operating under in past votes. Okay, that we, this is this is we have a motion. This I know, and, I'm, and we're having a discussion, and I'm discussing. Okay, are you thank finished? you for reviewing that. Okay, you finished discussing. So uh, while I am not opposed to the lousy $500 to make it 3% and make everyone seem like they're getting fair treatment when they're not. I still think we really ought to do this uh, vote on January 2nd after we deal with the proper definition of full-time under the union contract. Uh, that's all contingent upon if we have a meeting on We're going to have one on the 9th, which is when we're going to deal with it. But we will there deal with this question inevitably. Thank you, Chair. So if you, want to, if you want to jam up the 9th, Mr. Chairman, that's your prerogative. It is. But all right. okay. don't, don't expect, don't right. expect that, uh, that there will be silence on that topic. Okay, good. Never I wouldn't that. expect that. Not on that topic, because I don't think this budget committee or any committee any should be tolerant of, right. of, of, of having right, facts Tim. misrepresented have... upon which we're making decisions. Thank you. All, any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of doing this, raise your hand, please. Okay. Doing what? Of, <laughs> if the motion is to add, add back $577 <laughs> to, to, the tax to, to the tax collector's thing. So should we get a 3% raise? Okay. Okay, so we have Ginny, we have Sonny, we have Danielle, we have Maureen, we have Steve LeBranch, Steve Henderson, and those opposed, we have David, and uh, and, and and Regina's abstaining. Um, Tim, are you going to abstain or That's oppose? That's correct. And Tim is okay. So we have two abstentions. I'm um, with Regina. Okay, two abstentions. Wow. That's <laughs> and <laughs> one. Like the yoga. And David, you were a no. No. Okay. And David was a no. Okay. <laughs> so so Christy, you're going to have to adjust the bottom line again. So. But, but just for Max's information, we approved a bottom line tonight. It's just going to get adjusted a little bit. Yeah, it's a meaningless bottom line, Max. <laughs> it's not meaningless. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead, Jenny. I have a question. Why is there such a big discrepancy between the deputy town clerk and the deputy tax collector? Could you find out, Regina or Fred? They're both in the Teamster contract. They're, and they're both on step five. And there's a big difference between their pays. They need better negotiators? No, I don't know. <laughs> it's, they're both union positions. They've both been in the union forever. The deputy tax collector was a part-time position for a long, long time, right? That's correct. Is that why? And, and I'm wondering if that maybe attributes Could to it, be, possibly. the union negotiated where they are. So. Yeah. They yeah. both are in the union. Okay. I can so confirm that the for you. The deputy tax collector was part-time. The tax collector came in and asked to make the deputy tax collector full-time to make her job easier, yeah. and then the tax collector came in last year, and now having made her job easier, she asked for a raise, and we gave it to her. And now this year, she asked for another raise, and we gave it to her. And then she asked for an additional raise on top of that, and we just gave it to her. So that's the history on that. Okay, thank you very much, Tim, for the history lesson. All right, um, anything well, can else? Can I ask one more question? If you would, please. Uh, last week, it was asked that I give all of the elected officials wages and, yeah. Uh, the committee wishing for me to calculate well, further actually, on that spreadsheet or no? Actually, it's, I'm glad you asked because I was going to bring that up under old business. Okay, but, that's fine. I will sit no, here no, and listen. No, no, but we can talk about it right now if anybody would like to. I just like need to know to. if I need to do anything, that's all. Okay, because you did send out a revision of the spreadsheet, correct? Um, I, Tim sent some corrections that he found right. on my spreadsheet. Right, and because I... I asked you to like resend it, but I accidentally sent you the uh, agenda instead. <laughs> it was a mistake. It was just That's a matter funny. of <laughs> the wrong, the wrong attachment. That happens okay. to all of us, Steve. It does, you know. <laughs> so, in any case, is there any discussion about that since? Um, since Christy asked and brought it up. Well, I, I think that's great that she's going to send a wider distribution on the corrected spreadsheet. Yes. And when she does, all the members will be equally informed, and we can better decide okay. on January 2nd when we meet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you very Sounds much. And you know what? Thank you very much, Fred and Christy. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year's to both of you. And I think we're finished with you, yeah. so... Christy, Merry Christmas. It's Thank best you. to... It might be best to split while you can. Well, I have a comment. I have a comment to make. Before Christy, before Christy leaves, you know, I, I was, gi I was run, given... Run, Christy, run. run. I was given a great opportunity to kind of go around the protocol and work directly with Christy 
last week. Yes. And I spent some time with Christy on the phone. We cleared up, I don't know, maybe a dozen issues in one phone call. <laughs> on many of these issues, I've been trying to get through the protocol for years. How long was the phone call? Oh, slightly less than two hours. Hmm. Yeah, I, I want to know when you got the cold. He, he went into my lunch hour. <laughs> two hours. There you go. <laughs> you know, well, I, I called her. She said she wanted to deal with them all right now, and we went through them just bang, bang, bang. Didn't we, Christy? Okay. And she was very professional, and it I'm was sure. an absolutely pleasant experience. There was no contention. There was no defensiveness on either side. Okay, it was just beautiful. You said it it's the way it's we haven't heard right. from her. It's the way it's, no, the problem is when you raise okay, the okay. problem is when you raise these questions Everybody can't be on camera. People tend to think you're attacking them. They become defensive. Contentions raised. On, and I'm just pointing out that that protocol actually engenders the very contention we all pretend to want to avoid. Okay. All right. Thank you. I, I just want to mention something on that. Thank you and again, I'm asking, Christy. I'm asking Christy and the town manager. Because I said I allowed him to do that. And I want to make sure of one thing, that it was okay with both of you. Because he hasn't got the bill yet, so I don't know. Okay, because I just want to make sure that everybody here understands. have an expense account to pay it with. Okay. <laughs> I, I want everybody here to understand something. And there, there is a, a little bit of a protocol. And that is that every person on this commission is not simply allowed to. You can, and anybody can ask a question. But... The idea of the protocol was that people that are working, for instance, down at the DPW and stuff like that, uh, they have jobs and they can't stop <coughs> and answer questions individually for 11 different members. And that was the reason that it would go through flow in a certain mm. way. And that's all. I just want to say thank you very much for allowing that. It did answer some questions. I we're probably going to talk about it during the other business because you're supposed to report back to us. I'm happy to give the report whenever you have time, Mr. During Chairman. We'll, we'll and you probably will business. have time if you have a January 2nd meeting. And so, thank you both. And thank you best you. Yes. <laughs> yes, you're, And on that, you best leave. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> next, <laughs> we're not, Mr. Chairman. That way you're going to all leave. Uh, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. Fred. Okay, I would point out, you. Mr. Chairman, that I was not making a statement against protocol, but rather the protocol that has been in place. Yeah. No, no, is is, uh, is not uh, addressing the thing we intended to address. It actually promotes contention. Oh, yeah, I agree. Uh, and and it needs to be refined in a way. You know, it was a week meeting ago, no. two meetings ago, when I asked in the meeting whether you were okay with Matt, Christy's okay with that, Fred was okay. And so I was able to skip over the protocol, and it was a great experience. Well, you see what happens. Comparatively. You see what happens when it's sort of like uh, a little bit of honey versus vinegar. I'm not, and that's all we're hey, I'm all that. sweet. You're as sweet as pie. Now, we're going to go on to agenda item number six, approval of minutes from... <laughs> okay, approval of minutes from November 22nd, December 5th, and December 7th. And the way that we're going to do this now is that we're going to... I'm going to first ask, does anybody have uh, the... the Minutes for the 21st were revised by Barbara once before. Um, does anybody have any further changes for the minutes of November 21st? Okay, I do. Um, on the original, the original set that was sent out, on page 5 of 6, under Village District Update, it said, Mr. Ladd said designers and musicians were working on the Xmas float. And I specifically asked for the, that to be the spelling of Christmas. And, Barbara, you did change it. It's interesting, on the original one, you, um, you capitalized the X in Xmas, yet in the change, you didn't capitalize the C in Christmas. Could you please <laughs> correct that one more time? And you that, think I'm picky. And, 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 That's not what and, I think. And, and for that, yeah, exactly. Um, we all have our own thoughts on it. And, and, and for that reason, it we're not going to approve this because sure. there, you make the correction if you would send it to me, a copy, and then I will, at that point, we can't approve these unless they're correct. So we're not going to approve those. That will be sitting. Um, when you make the corrections, as always, I send the copies to Christina, and then she distributes them to everybody. So you cause them to be distributed to us? So, yes. Now, we're going to be doing next the, um, the minutes for December 5th, and 
I just want to mention, does anybody have any changes on the December 5th? Any changes at all? Anybody? Seeing none, um, is there a motion to accept the minutes for the December 5th? Make the motion. Okay, Sonny made the motion. Anybody want to second that, please? A second? I'll second that. Seconded by Regina. All, all, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of accepting the December 5th meetings as they're written. And so we have Ginny um, and Sonny, yes. Regina, yes. Steve LeBranch, yes. Steve Henderson, yes. David uh, Moyer, yes. Tim, any any? I didn't read them. I'm staying. Okay. Any nays? And abstentions would be uh, yeah, yeah. Maureen no. and also Danielle. Okay. So the fifth, they're now history, with or, with or without Tim reading them. Um, okay, now we have the seventh, December seventh. They've been available for a while, and hopefully everybody looked at them. I do want to mention on the seventh that um, we had requested we had requested uh, minimum minutes, mm -hmm. and so what I'm what I had uh, what I call mini minutes, because they're <laughs> It's it's the it's just what we asked for, and I thank Barbara very much for for doing them. Um, anybody have any changes with our minutes for December seventh? Any discussion? Seeing none, um, would somebody like to make a motion to accept these minutes? I'll make a motion. I'll include okay, the Regina 7th. has made the motion. Barbara, and does somebody want to second that? Second. Seconded by Ginny. All those in favor of accepting these minutes, please raise your hand. We have Ginny, we have Regina, we have Steve LaBranch, we have Steve Henderson and David. Um, those that uh, nay, those that abstain. Okay, and those abstaining would be Tim Jones, Sonny Kravitz, uh, Danielle, who of course wasn't here, and also Maureen, who wasn't here. Okay, so that takes care of the minutes that we have. So we're going to go right on to the next thing, which is the agenda item number seven, the selectman's report. Um, Regina, do you have anything to report to us? Uh, we had a pretty good meeting last night. Mm -hmm. Mr. Jones actually captured all of it and highlighted it and sent it to the entire budget committee, which I thought was a really, I appreciate that. Thank you. We, I mean, we talked about the 13.8 million. We talked about the 4.2 for the marsh pipes. Again. We have sewer pipes under the marsh. It definitely is an issue. It's something that does have to be dealt with. But like I said, you can only, like everyone is saying tonight, we can only do one thing at a time. And we decided on the 13.8, it's time to start, you know, picking away at this wastewater treatment plant. That's really what needs to be done next for the town. So. Thank, thank you, Regina. Anybody have any questions for Regina? Tim, you no. know, I know that you had something for her. You wanted to ask her if she received a request that you sent me. You don't have that question? That um, quest, that request for the 32, RSA 32-10, 10? Yeah, I don't have that. Okay, I don't have, have that, that question. Yeah, that has, gone, that has gone to Mark, though. Okay. For, formally okay. gone to the okay. town. Okay, so we're done. Uh, village district report, please. Yeah, I have a couple things. First question I have is, have we set a date for when the um, village district is coming before the board? No. That has February. Like February. Always, yeah. It's in February, but the, right. the schedule that I have Oh, here, no, it's uh, we meet on the third Tuesday in February, so it would be, it's, it would be it's that? just traditional. Yeah, yeah the, the schedule that I have prepared only goes as far as the public hearing for the town's budget. Okay, well, so you'll let I'll us be, know that. Of course. Always so you the can, third Tuesday. You can be and quite I, sure, because I'll, I'll let you know as soon as I prepare the budget for the village district no, right. <laughs> and, and, and present it to you, <laughs> then as commissioners, then we'll... Okay, you know, I just I'll let didn't you know, know since I wasn't here. here, I don't know whether it was set up or not. Before yeah. And I, I do want to mention that um, I talked to uh, the legal department and at that meeting um, because it would be considered a conflict of interest that I will have to um, step down as chair and the vice chair will run that meeting. That makes okay? sense. I can still vote, but it's, it would be a conflict if I'm, um, especially since as treasurer, I, I benefit financially, 
So that's the conflict, okay? But you can vote when you benefit financially, apparently. I'm it's pretty weird. Well, I'm going to vote. I mean, the selectmen <laughs> and the school and everybody else. I just said, find that kind of odd. That I, it, is, <laughs> it's, it is odd. Life is odd. For yes, time. indeed, it is here okay, in the town. Okay, anything else, to Maureen? <laughs> yes, I just would like to uh, uh, tell the townspeople to come uh, to the New Year's Eve celebration. Um, the fireworks will begin at 8 o'clock. There is uh, going to be a uh, DJ on the stage, as there was last year, and there will be refreshments. Um, Free cookies, right? Blue Ocean co cocoa um, at, the, uh, at the Blue Ocean, and I believe the state also is having something upstairs. Yes. I don't know what that is, but that also is uh, occurring. Yes. Thank please you. come. Thank you very much. Um, school district, please, Ginny. Nothing. Nothing to report. Okay. And Brian's not here, so you might want to make a note, Barbara, that Brian and Mike Plouffe are not present tonight. Okay. Brian was sick, and I think he probably still is, but just put them as not present for the moment, for the minutes, okay? And so, um, other business. Do we have any other business before us? Yes, Sonny? Yeah. I handed out the uh, uh, library's trust money. Yes, you do. What it is, the library law says they can't be defunded, so the town doesn't even look at the library budget. But they have $125,000 in Vanguard. When I was the trustee, they made me, I, I became the treasurer. I walked in cold. They had a number of CDs. Nobody knew about them. I only found out about them when the renewal of the letters came. And I put all the money into Vanguard and spread them out into a couple of index funds. That's library money. It's 125000 currently. And it should be. And when I was library trustee, the, the attorney general and the, the assistant attorney general for trusts said the libraries should disclose gross budgeting. Un unfortunately, man, the neglects it. So that's the reason I brought, brought it up. Okay, Sonny, thank you for that. Do they ever use that money for anything, Sonny? <coughs> Mr. Chairman, through you, if I could ask Sonny, do they ever use that money for anything? Um, okay, um, Tim asked the question, Sonny. Did you hear what he said? Yeah. Okay, yeah. ask it again, Tim, please. Do they ever use that Vanguard money for anything? No, not really. So it just sits there? Yeah, but I mean, when they come in, when they want to change the windows, they could have paid. Yeah, that's why I'm bringing it in. So the, but they're pretty much out of projects, so they'll find something. Okay. But they've never spent the money on anything, right? No. Okay. And so there's no reason to believe they ever will. Yeah. Okay. Um, Sonny, are you finished with your... Okay. I just want to read something that um, to make sure that we understand. Um, just a note regarding the continuing issues brought up on the library and the trust accounts that they manage directly. I have attached copies of statutes dealing with the library and have highlighted the important sections dealing with items that are not included in the bu their budgets because they are non-lapsing funds. In other words, not part of their budget. That includes funds from their income generating equipment which in parentheses is RSA 202 hyphen capital A colon 11 hyphen A close parentheses money received from fines and payments for lost and damaged books shall be held in a non-lapsing separate fund and shall be in addition to the appropriation and in parentheses RSA 202 hyphen capital A semicolon 11 comma Roman numeral 3 close parentheses, expend income from all trust funds for library purposes, which is RSA 202 hyphen capital A, semicolon 11 comma Roman numeral 4. Custody and control of trust funds, RSA 202 hyphen A colon 22, library trust fund annual report, RSA 202 hyphen capital A colon 12 hyphen A, small a, annual reports, RSA 202 hyphen A, colon 12. All of these statutes make it very clear that the library trust funds are not part of the annual budget of the library, but are non-lapsing funds outside of the budget. Okay, this is from our town manager. He attached all of the examples and highlighted it as well. If anybody would like 
Mr. Chairman, we, I don't know that that question was ever in dispute. I'm just reading. This is in regards to yeah, no, they the keep fund. I just wanted accounts. to, yeah, I just wanted to, um, because I just received this from the town manager, and he wanted to clarify. Okay, so yeah, that's no, I'm just no. reading it for that information only. Okay, thank you very much, Sonny. Anything else about that? Yeah, no. What the library trustee, uh, what the treasurer does is they they run two checking accounts: one for the appropriated funds from the town, and the other from the whatever projects raise money, so that's really how they keep it things separate, so. Okay, thank you very much, Sonny. Um, any other any other old business from anybody? You mean other, other business? Any other business? <laughs> any old or, yeah, other business, new? Seeing none, I wish to, Christmas. yeah. I wish to wish everybody a uh, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year's, and I will, uh, would somebody make a motion, please, to adjourn? Make a motion to adjourn. Second. Regina, seconded by Steve. All those in favor, please raise your hands. Unanimous. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, everyone. Thank you, Merry Channel Christmas. 22. Thank you for the music, Tim. You're welcome, Steve. <laughs>